Let's start out on that dry cough. Let's, <laughs> let's open the show with a dry cough. I'm like Baba Booey, man, with the fucking throat <laughs> clearing all the time. It's the worst. It's like the pandemic is not the time to be clearing your throat. I know. My, Lux told me, look, my girl Lux told me about a meme she saw. It, it said, I used to cough to cover up my farts. <laughs> now I fart to cover up my cough. Now I queef, fart, any, anything I can do. I yell cunt, anything to cover up the fact that I'm coughing. If you got right. cough, people look at you like you just yelled the N word. Right. And you're just like, right. Jesus, why is it so bad? I think bad? that in, in what, what I just perpetrated was a, a different style of cough. It was more of the, the annoying throat clearing business. But you smoked. You used to smoke. I did. did. I used to smoke. But I think what, what destroyed me more than anything was uh, huffing nitrous oxide. That'll do it. I did that. Uh, <laughs> that, that goes into your. your <clears throat> throat i honestly I, I don't know like what all is actually the reason for why my voice is such a disaster i uh, think it's hot you're the janice joplin of the comedy world well, well I'll, I'll take it i'll take it and i definitely in my uh my journey of recovery you know as we go we take an inventory of the different things that really bother us please you know? look into camera whenever you talk about recovery okay look into your camera my okay. journey of recovery <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I, if we're supposed to address things in a certain yes. way, but in any yes. case, like we we make we we, uh, we make inventory yeah. of uh, of resentments, of fears, of uh, you know, of of like harm done others, things you need to apologize for, right. amends. And uh, on my fear inventory, like it, it was a big thing, like. Uh, Two, two things was like you know i'm afraid of like the you know of the, the reality of my deteriorating appearance and and my my shitty deteriorating voice and uh i'll just say i'd go ahead and say my sponsor he said well you know he said i think you said your voice you kidding me it's kind of trademark you know he said it's kind of trademark and as far as your appearance goes i hate to break it to you <laughs> but you were never really like popular because you were good looking <laughs> <laughs> he's like it wasn't quite that that got you where you are it was more your just like reckless willingness to shove shit up your ass <laughs> you know? like let's be clear about who you are and what you're about and that helped a lot like wait a second <laughs> yeah wait. But here's what i will say not to disagree with your sponsor who clearly knows what the fuck he's talking about i think my friends and I always thought you were hot. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I think that was always sort of a part of your appeal, if I may. Well, thank you. Your, I, I your appreciate Your reckless uh, disregard for your body and health made you even hotter to us girls that had bad childhoods. Well, I, I, I appreciate that a lot. <laughs> uh, and, and we have so much to get into. I know. I don't I even wanna... know where to start. But I also, I do need to, I start every episode of the podcast asking the guest with no weighing in from me, are we friends? I would say so. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would say I would say we are absolutely friends, and um, I remember the first time we met. It, it was uh, outside the Hollywood Improv. This wasn't that long ago. Nope. It wasn't that long ago. Oh wait, sorry. No, the first time we met, you were with. Uh, it was at the George Lopez show, and we had a mutual friend in an old uh, rep of yours. I blacked that out. Right. We met at the George Lopez shows, which they kept just like prohibitively cold. It was so uncomfortable <laughs> to be in that fucking studio. Everybody tries to emulate what David Letterman did, what David Letterman's whole psychology was audiences are going to stay awake if you keep the studio at 60 degrees. So everybody always put their studio at 60 degrees because they wanted to be like Letterman. And it's just like a nightmare for everyone. It was the worst. It was the worst. I've never experienced a studio that cold. But in any case, they want your there. nipples to be out when you come <laughs> out and do your stand-up set. Also, please don't Google my set on that because I I say midget like forty times and I'll get canceled. <laughs> uh, I had a discussion with Wee Man on my podcast about the M word. Yeah, and and whether or not it was. Uh, like, you know, with the progression of political correctness, if like retroactively it was a problem to have thrown that word around so much. Yeah, you're supposed to call them toddlers now. <laughs> I'm actually more offended by the, the politically correct term little people. 
because it's so fucking inherently belittling to it's, say, you know, yeah, you're a little bit, there's nothing fucking like. And you little is so like. Little. Like, you say, it's yeah. so you're little, you're small. Yeah. Like you're. Right. I think that's more offensive to me. But in any dwarf case. Dwarf was floating around for a couple dwarf, years. Dwarf, dwarf was, and, and I think dwarf is actually. It's a little, mag it's, it's, it's a little and, magical though. Right, but but uh, but technically, it's called dwarfism mm. in, uh, in, right. in in a, a scientific sense. So I think that dwarf would would be the ticket. Okay. Um, in any in any case, um, we met at the George Lopez show, and that uh, wasn't really much of an encounter to speak of. But I was probably unconscious and scared and trying to get your approval, so I probably don't remember anything. That was I, I, I was in recovery, so I, I, it, I don't even. I think that it was your this this rep who's since you know there's been distance between you guys. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and I think it was more of an encounter between me and him, and you just happened to be with him. Copy that. Copy that. Right, but but. In any case, uh, we met. I was coming out of. Uh, I guess we were both coming out of the Hollywood Improv. Yes. I had my bicycle, and we just then right. started chatting on this on the the sidewalk. And for me, like t to, uh, I was have felt a little bit weird about doing stand up in L.A. You know, like for some reason, like I don't know, because I because I came from another arena of entertainment I almost feel like oh, am I gonna be like accepted like there's just this like sort of social awkwardness yes. that I have in yeah. the stand-up scene in LA and I've been on tour for so for so long I feel like man I'm like always I, I hardly like am hurting for stage time to go try right. stuff so I don't know like now I've got more of a model and like when I'm putting together a new hour, like I totally do it, you know, at the local spots. Yeah. And that was what I was doing at the time. But I just couldn't believe it because you were so nice to me. It was just like, wow, like you were just like, here we, I just felt like, man, like Whitney Cummings, like, whoa, you know, I'm like, like imp I'm impressed. And like, we just started, sort of just chatted. It was the same thing with me. And I think for, I'm also at a point and like, I follow you on social and whatever. And I always know don't take this the wrong way, and I'll try to not take it the wrong way. <laughs> when you meet another comic and you see each other and you're instantly like family, and there's no like sexual weirdness, there's no like we're gonna date or flirt. It's like, yo, we're just like homies, we're just equals. It's the best feeling in the world to make a best friend like right away. You know what I mean? Well, right on. I, I was just super. We were like, let's hang out <clears throat> next week in Toronto, and we, you know. Right. Well, yeah. Then uh, what? You posted that you were going to be doing a, a show in in Vancouver for just for laughs, yeah. and I was like doing a show in the same fucking theater like the next night, and yeah. I was like, yo, I'm going to be there, and. Uh, Boom, we ended up... Uh, and then I kind of was like, I wait to reserve to see how friendly I'm going to be able to be with someone until I meet their partner. And I was oh, like, yeah. oh, God, what if his girl's whack? Like, whatever. Dude, she is so awesome. She did. It's like... I don't know how you scored this. I don't know what... I mean, no offense. It, it's uh, it, it's it's an absolute fact that because your girl is a girl's girl. You know, women know right away. Anybody who has met my girl, who 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 really cares about me, who has a close relationship with me, universally, they all. The consensus is that I am a better version of myself because I am with her. So cool. Like it's and 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 everybody passionately loves my girl because we all have friends who they're in a relationship with just yes. just a, someone where you're like oh someone God. that doesn't challenge them someone that's not their equal we've all been there we've all been in, right. in a place where we weren't cooked enough to be with an equal or someone that had self-respect right you know um how long have you been together and were you together before you proposed we just past uh three years we met on january 7th 2017 nice our first kiss was february 5th of 2017 after that was we, like a month we dated responsibly for a month really uh-huh no. yeah i have like a history with uh no kissing but did you have sex before that <laughs> we, 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 the same day we kissed for the first time we also kissed each other's peepees <laughs> 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 Why is pee pee so much grosser? You know, it makes me think of your dick as like a baby, like a, right. a, ba a tiny baby. Yeah. Right. I mean, so, <laughs> so did you know right away, like, this is someone that I'm not going to be sloppy with? This is someone that I want to pace Well, with yeah, because I mean, like, I just, I could say comfortably that, you know, from 
certainly like the age of 11 when I got my first Motley Crue album, I aspired to be a sex addict. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I wanted like, I loved Motley Crue because of yeah. just sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Yes. And that was what I, I wanted to be a fucking rock star. And I didn't care. Whatever the shortest distance was between me and partying like Motley yes. Crue, if it involved shoving things up my ass, I didn't fucking care because that's what I, that's how I want to live. Right. I want to be the center of attention and I want to just live the life of fucking of debauchery. I want to wet my pee pee. Yeah, <laughs> and 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 I mean that was uh, that was how how it went down. Really, I mean that was what I aspired, for, you know, to be. And um, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, like all, basically turned on me. But the sex was—it's a more insidious thing because yes. here I was on tour doing, uh, you know, and, and to this day I've, I've done, you know, I've been doing stand up on tour for for just about 10 years. Yeah, I mean. And, and, um, and still religiously after every single show, you know, before I walk off stage, I, I, I tell the, the, the audience that I will not go anywhere, I will not do anything until I take a photo with every single audience member who wants one. Awesome. And I have it set up so that I take the photos myself with the, uh, with the, like a point and shoot camera that's real fast and I pop up, bump, 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 and then I upload them to my site. Because also, no offense, you guys, we love you, but you don't know how to use your camera phone. Right. It's you the just, fucking worst. You, and then you don't get a good photo. The picture and, looks like dog shit. And then it looks like dog shit you're out of focus like you get nervous they wait, and, they wait until they get up to, they wait until they they get to you in the line and, and then, then and then they turn to someone else and say oh can you take this and that person doesn't know how to fucking work their and phone and then it's like we're taking a video and we're calling right. your mom and we're facetiming right. people and also i like, get dope photos for everybody we want you to get home and your photo to actually be good yeah right for sure yeah and and, and i upload i'd like with, within 10 to 15 minutes of me taking the last photo they are all Already available to you at my website, so great. and so I do great. it myself. Yeah. But this whole process, which I still do, and I still believe in it, I think it's so self-serving. It's like grassroots promotion to yeah. send everybody home with a picture. I wonder <clears> how <throat> this is going to affect meet and greets. This pandemic situation, right? I mean, th I think that the meet and greet is the least of the concern. The concern is everybody packed into the actual theater yes. or club. I think we're going to be doing every <laughs> other row for a while. I think we might have some glass. So funny that you're in the, you're in the row business. Oh, I'm I'm the <laughs> <laughs> but the fucking worst thing is that it, that, that it was, it, it was, it was like the fucking week before this pandemic shut everything down yeah. that my agent called up to say basically congratulations no more comedy clubs we'll for you theaters. you have graduated which by we're the way we're not booking any more comedy clubs and then the fucking this happens but uh, clubs <laughs> are the greatest thing in the fucking world clubs are how you get so good clubs are how you get out there and you're really able to feel people's response and you're really able to connect like I miss clubs you know doing theaters is like kind of an ego thing and you want to show everyone you can sell out theaters but you get in there and you're like god i can't even see those people back there right except for the fucking grind i used, I used yeah. to do the first uh you know the first like seven or eight years i would do the thursday through sunday thing. yeah that's how you get better that's the gym and then uh and, and that's why people by the way if you had gone straight to theaters comics really wouldn't have liked you <laughs> <laughs> that was a smart move. Right. Um, but then, but then I, you know, when I got in with Lux, and, and, and the whole point of the talking about the meet and greets was that for the first, what, like uh, four or five years, mm -hmm. that meet and greet after the show, mm -hmm. as much as it was a function of, of you know, grassroots promotion, like yeah. the creating a connection with the fans, it, dude, there, every one of those meet and greets was a glorified audition to see who the lucky lady was that would get to suck my wiener that night. <laughs> No, like uh, <laughs> <laughs> and and you know that it's it. it how do you have? Uh, can I, how do you even have that conversation? They come by. It's pre-pandemic when you could just suck anyone's dick you wanted. <laughs> Without a 14-day quarantine, <laughs> just remember you got to put a little hole in your mask and right. go down on that. Uh, it, I mean, <clears throat> how would it go down? I mean, I, it would just be like, ah. Uh, it's a hat like you half the time it. half the, the time vibration. the chick would just give you her number or like or mm -hmm. like whatever and he would just be like oh hey you know like yeah you know s s s tweet me <laughs> you know or like whatever or like yeah. or like hey yeah. you know uh yeah, oh, dude you should write down your number like i mean however yeah got it, it, got it, got it, it got was it. It, it didn't it was never like uh 
smooth, <laughs> you know, but you're not looking for some romantic. You would never, charming. you know, um, and, and I, I'm not like, I'm not proud to even like to characterize myself as, as that way. It's just a reality of, of how it was, you yeah. know, but as I so like when, when it would have been, I remember that a couple of things happened. Uh, I, I was in Atlanta doing the punchline and Chris DePetta, mm-hmm. He was like, dude, because my whole act was about, uh, it was about, it was just blue. And like, the, I started out in comedy with all just like, oh, I'm Steve O, the Jackass guy. And I'm going to tell you every like, you know, graphic and gratuitous, you yeah. know, groupie sex story. And it's going to be really funny. Because you've already sort of transcended this bar of extreme. Like, I, you know, I think about you, um, you know, when I see you do stand up, and I'm like, God, his fans have seen him do so much that he, do you feel this pressure to have? have to deliver something uh, so shocking, something so the, surprising. The, the pressure I think I put on myself mm-hmm. more, more than anything. But yeah, I would have like a bit where it's like, yeah, you know, like I couldn't believe it. I was like in a situation with three different chicks, you know, and like it becomes evident that they're all going to like, you know, take turns like going down on me and I'm terrified because I'm going to like, and the, the, the first one starts and like she's doing like way too good of a job so I shove her off and I go to the next one and think, God, that one was just started chewing on my dick, like <laughs> the toothiest blowjob of all time. And I'm like, oh, thank God I needed that because now I'm I can last a little longer. So then, like, <laughs> Wait, you know, I have never. Everybody was like, sucked. I was like, this chick's fucking sucking my dick like a crocodile, and uh, and I've never been more grateful because <laughs> it was the only way I was able to hang in there for all three. I have never sucked a dick with my friends before. What are like, these? <laughs> Are they just, are they, is... And I feel like I'm already getting, like, that sense of disease that is where my, where, you know, my fiancé is going to be like, why the fuck are you telling these stories? <laughs> you know, like, why, why are you even doing this? You know, like, uh, it, but, but, so let me, like, just sort of make, make it, like, for a reason that I'm describing it, is that... Is that I got to Chris Petta was like, yo, dude, this act of yours, it's 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 not fucking cool. You know, he's like, yeah, maybe you're getting away with it now. But like, at what age do you think? Oh, and this chick sucking my dick, uh, you know, like, yeah, it's going to just, yeah. it's just going to start like you're going to get to an age like you're kind of already at an age. It's just not it's just not fun. It's just creepy and uncomfortable. And like, dude, you're better than that. Like, you can do better material, you're smarter than that. Than that. Yeah. There's- and, and he was right. And all and I was I was was like at the time like when i'm 45 now at the time i was maybe 38 you know <clears throat> and uh I, I i feel like fuck i'm approaching 40 and like i'm just acting out sexually mm. you know like i'm acting out sexually and like the, then like it's just not a fucking good look it's not like the way to to be happy in the long run yeah <clears throat> and so like <clears throat> And, and 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 I made myself a promise. I was like, okay, I, I, I want to, in order to be happy, I subscribe to the idea that, that I need to learn how to be in a healthy relationship. So step one, working towards that is no more hooking up with random chicks on the road. Awesome. No more, no more acting out. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, fuck, I, I couldn't keep my promise. And this all became, in real time, it became part of my act. I'm like, I made myself this promise. And then, like, the next stop on tour, there I was, yeah. minding my own business yeah. in the titty bar. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Minding my own business. <laughs> Calling the hooker. <laughs> right. I'm minding my own business in the titty bar. And this little dancer comes running over all excited, and she shoves her butt in my face. And then the, right there, she's got my autograph tattooed on her butt cheek. It's, it's almost your responsibility at this point. <laughs> right, right. I mean, it would be rude. It would be It'd wrong. It'd be inhumane. <laughs> right. It'd be verbally and emotionally abusive. <laughs> right. And not. Right. right. The and least so, you can do. Right. And so, like, the, and this was my experience was like, okay, so, so then I got into therapy. You know, I, was, I got into therapy with the, you know, the therapy that was like more like about that. You know, and it was, he was just like, okay. And I ended up like just full blown, like the approach of uh you know of recovery yeah you know it's like you know the full-on 12-step approach to sex addiction and i just dove into it like i dove into it with drugs and alcohol i'm a snob about furniture i don't like most furniture you know me i really only like buying vintage tchotchkes from flea markets but 
I, I'm obsessed with this brand. They, I'm just going to read this little part because I, I, I'm going to say it's like very modern and fresh. This is my description of article furniture. Modern, fresh, like a little smidgen of rustic character and charm. Mm -hmm. And would you say undertones of mid-century modern classic? Which is, that's a lot of adjectives, but yeah, I sure would say that. I think that it's it's a classic, timeless. That's what I look at the article furniture yeah, it, stuff, and I'm like, oh, this is still going to hold up in ten years. Like it's not so trendy that I feel like it's not going to. Um, I'm not going to be like, oh, what was I thinking when I bought that ten years ago? Do you know what I'm saying? It's yes, it's like it's like millennial classic. Ooh, that's a good way to put that's it. Huh. I would describe it. I have a lot of their furniture: a now, couch, table. Love where it. are you getting all this money to buy all this article? Well, um, I have had jobs in my life throughout my lifetime. <laughs> so let's see how they describe it. Article combines a curation of boutique furniture store with the comfort and simplicity of shopping online. Article's team of designers focuses on beautifully crafted pieces, quality materials, and durable construction. They're also, look, I got it, dedicated to modern aesthetic of mid-century, Scandinavian, industrial, and bohemian designs. That's basically what I how I described it. Yeah, it really is. Fair prices. You save up to 30% over traditional retail. I know. That's the other thing is that you go on it and you look at how much it costs and you're like, this just feels like. It's a very affordable. I know. It's like, I feel like I'm not getting scammed on this. Article is able to keep their prices low. Ah, because they cut out the middleman. They sell directly to you. They don't do showrooms. They don't do salespeople. They don't re they they don't mark up their retail prices. Okay, that's why. I'm Which not you love because you hate nothing more than going to buy furniture and they're like, we have to order it for you. I can't. I can't. And then I'm like, I'm tr I just want to buy a chair. Why do I have to pay for nine people's salaries? Like, I just want, I just want this chair. Fast, affordable shipping is available across. So USA, Canada is free on orders over nine hundred nine. Oh, so our shipping is going to be free over nine hundred ninety nine dollars. All in stock items are delivered in two weeks or less. So article is offering our listeners fifty dollars off your first purchase of a hundred dollars or more. If you go to article.com slash Whitney and the discount will be automatically applied at checkout. That's article.com slash Whitney to get $50 off of your purchase of $100 or more. Article.com slash Whitney. Now, here's what I don't want you guys to do. I don't need you to listen to my podcast and go, oh my God, I trust Whitney's taste so much. Whitney's right about everything. Whitney would never lie to me. And then you go to article.com and you're going to buy a bunch of stuff and you don't put my name in. Don't do that. You need to support the show. Let them know we sent you, okay? I want them to know who gets credit around here, okay? I want them to know who's boss around here. Tag us. And also, you know what? This is my new favorite thing. When you get your furniture, tag me. Or when you buy it, tag me in it. And I'll repost you in my stories so that I can brag that I'm a very influential influencer. Okay, love you. Bye. Hello, welcome. Okay, do you do you need an attitude adjustment before we start this next ad? No, what was wrong with that? I said hello, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> That's how most people greet people. <laughs> okay, so I'm not even again. I like to try. I like to do a thing where I prove to the listeners that all the products that sponsor us that we partner with are products I actually use. I'm not a sellout. I'm not corny. I don't just like willy nilly peddle my wares and like schlep around brands and products that I don't authentically use. So you know how my skin's been like amazing lately? Yes, I've noticed <laughs> that lately. Don't you think? I think it's because of the ritual vitamins that I start. I started taking oh. these. I started taking these before the podcast started, by the yeah, way. Yeah, you've been taking those since I've known you. I've you been. You've around on tour. I've been taking fish oil, okay? And this is the only fish oil that I will take because it's the only one that doesn't make me feel like I'm burping up clam chowder for the entire day. You know what I mean? This yeah. is, uh, it has, all, this is the only thing I take. I don't take anything else. I don't even put the vitamins in this blender with my smoothie anymore because I just, I can't. So this one I love because it's, you just take two capsules, nine nutrients you need to support a strong foundation for your life. And haven't, my nails have been growing faster and not breaking and my hair is growing faster. I cut my hair like, I don't know, like a month ago and it's already grown like three inches. So. I know, we have to keep shaving you and trimming your nails and having a pet. <laughs> From D3 to omega-3, Ritual's Essential for Women helps fill gaps in a woman's diet. There's no no nausea capsule. Yeah, that's the other thing. You know how normally when you take a fish oil pill, you're like, Ugh. 
you start like gagging and you're like, oh God, yeah, I, think gross. I think I'm going to puke up wharf here in a minute. No nausea capsule with ritual vitamins. Design is gentle on an empty stomach. And there, that's what it is. There's a mint tab in every bottle to keep things fresh, you know? And now that we're all wearing masks and we have to inhale our own breath every day, all day, this is the only kind of fish oil you want to take because it makes that breath ah, ah, minty, fresh. Ah, 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 bah, bah, bah. No fishy aftertaste common with most omega threes. Now, do you want to do the rest? Sure. Ritual is. Did you just clear your throat? <laughs> I sure did. Ritual is traceable and transparent. It's also delivered. Subscription is easy to start and it's easy to snooze. Wait, it's important to that. Okay, so this is the key. No one wants to go to grocery stores right now. No one wants to go to right like the the pharmacy. This comes to your door, delivered to you, Rona free. Continue. It is. It's only a dollar a day to have the essential nutrients your body mm. needs delivered every month with no strings attached. Oh, I like that. Better health. Better health doesn't happen overnight, and right now, Ritual is offering Whitney's listeners 10% off during your first three months. Fill in the gaps in your diet with Essentials for Women, mm. a small step that helps support a healthy foundation for your body. Visit Ritual.com slash Whitney to start your Ritual today. That's 10% off during your first three months at Ritual.com slash Whitney. I'm telling you, everybody always asks me what I do to my skin. I, I truly think it's this. Good skin starts inside out. Should I? I mean, is that your new slogan? And like the reason, not that my girl is thrilled for me to even be sharing any of this. You can, but no, 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 no decide it's fine. tomorrow to cut it out. Abs you absolutely not. But the, the reason why I like it, it's okay mm -hmm. is that the world is full of fucking scumbags who would never consider themselves, let alone call themselves sex addicts, yeah. who are rampantly cheating, mm -hmm. fucking just being mm -hmm. just shitheads, you know, like the fucking everything wrong with the world. Yeah. And like, I would rather be someone who says, hey, I'm a sex addict. Yeah. However, like I've done like an incredible amount of work over years to establish integrity mm -hmm. and honesty and behave in a way that, you know, so it's like, it's, it's, it's like a blessing and a curse. It's like, Oh, you know, like I, I'm with this guy who identifies as a sex addict, but he, he does all this work to make sure that, that to me, a sex addict in recovery is the fucking best catch you can get because i mean it's that uh, because you know i talk about sex addiction as often as i can i identify as a love addict and al anon and all that everyone knows that about me but uh you know sex addiction is one of the fucking most insidious ones because a right. lot like food addiction in right. unlike drugs and alcohol, there's no eliminating it there's no eliminating there's, you just have to learn how to moderate imagine it. having to do cocaine once a day <laughs> right <laughs> three times a week you know right. so it to me those are the fucking badass ninjas, yeah. the people that are in sex addiction recovery it's it's like graduate school dude for... that's what we call it. we call it graduate school because it right. is most insidious and you know and you know for people that are always wondering am i a sex addict and but this with porn Every time I talk about this, everyone's like, I must, I do that. It, it really is when it makes your life unmanageable. So if you're having sex three times a day with your girl, like, that's awesome. If you're late for work, if you're not paying your right. rent, if you're not, you know. Sure. So, and when it stops being fun, when it starts feeling like an obligation and not something you're yeah. choosing. Porn is a no-fly zone for me. I, 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 I can't fuck with it. But in, in, in sex addict recovery, like, each person defines their own s sexual that's sobriety. Right. That's right. Because some addicts can participate in activities that others can't. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of create our own our own model. And my sex addiction uh, manifested in, in what I learned when I got in there was sexual anorexia, <coughs> which is where you deprive the person you're with of sex to try to control them, which is like okay. a whole other weird fucked up 
I, I understand sexual anorexia a little bit differently because I ended up <clears throat> with the, the therapist was like, yo, you know, because I would keep coming to the therapist and I'd be like, fuck, I did it again. You know, fuck, I did it again. Yeah, yeah. He was like, I got to recommend uh, an, an intensive outpatient, you know? And so I did that in 2013. And did you do no, because I did no celibacy. Sex. Yep. I did no sex for a year. They, they recommend, they recommend not only no sex, but they recommend like full on celibacy, no masturbation, no like wow. just straight up. And they recommend like 30 days 60 days 90 days i did 431 days that's because fucking <laughs> so how many like i've had to quit like coffee and stuff like right. how many how many days was it hard and then did it start to just become you know and like i did not blow a load for the entire year of 2014 yeah it was October 2013 to, I believe, February of 2015. Like, isn't that, Did not blow is that physically painful for a while? I, yeah, I remember I, I jokes about this. And like, as I went through this whole, <laughs> as, I, as I went through this whole, like, saga, yeah. it just became material. Yeah. And, and it actually, like, kind of justified those earlier bits because it's like I started out here and, and the, that first hour was a journey yeah. of, like, yeah. you know, I got into it and I genuinely approached this this uh sexual addiction recovery saying just out loud like you know like my my whole motto was i am preemptively doing the work to become the man the love of my life deserves that's gonna make me cry so that so that i because if i were to meet the love of my life i wouldn't and it she would, would have would, no she would have no interest right, in you first right. of all. Right. So I had to become I had to become that in order to be ready to meet Lux. That's and right. so and, and I do all of this work to, to to you know, and so And I love that because I hear so many people they're like, I just want like a good man and I just want a good woman. It's like, but you're not a good person. <laughs> right. Why what do what <clears throat> they see in you? Why don't you elevate yourself to where right. your equal be be the kind of the person that you want is not gonna be interested in you. You're gonna be just right. a fucking bunch of red right, flags. Right, we attract people who are as healthy as we are love you know, it. it's like it's like the level of water like like meets like yes. attracts like and then so, i love what you're saying the reason it's so important to talk about sex addiction is so much of it is about shame and right. the aftermath and the shame aftermath you know i was talking about this with dax the other day is like i used to cheat in relationships and like the cheating wasn't enjoy it was just about that adrenaline dopamine shame hit afterwards of oh, i'm so gross why did i do that that was so good like oh you're such well, a I, I, and, and then the next thing was the acting out with food yeah so now it's so that's my 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 it's most whack a mole. Oh, 100%. <laughs> 100%. And 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 I arrived at the conclusion with food that obviously like really what I'm after because because I've got this little negotiation system in my head where it's like fuck I, I just it used to be a cigarette after uh, after a meal. Yeah. And then it turned into like I just I'm, a pie. I become a fucking <laughs> werewolf. I as soon as I finish my meal, now I become a werewolf yes. with the sugar craving. Yes. And I and I start thinking to myself, "Oh my god, I want a dessert." But but no, nah, I but but I, I'll be so mad at my, you know, <clears throat> and it's like, "No, I, I want it, but I shouldn't have it." And then <clears throat> I and then I give in and 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 I fucking just beat myself up and I realize that there's obviously something very rewarding about the shame yeah. uh, like that's like the hit that I'm after I, yep. think. I think more than the more than I want to eat the dessert is that I somehow take some perverse pleasure or satisfaction in having something to fucking feel awful about yeah that's right it's sort of like back to the oh yeah I'm a piece of shit it's like <laughs> right. my self esteem is getting a little too high uh, there for a minute dude my shit used to be so gnarly like uh, mine was very much it was like like binging but I never purged because I think that my need to isolate and hide uh, in fear of like deep friendships I would eat just binge I'd have like five boxes of cereal and then go to crunch on sunset uh, I'd go to a gym and work out for like four hours and it was my way of like debilitating myself so that I didn't have to have relationships or friendships or whatever yeah. you know foods a lot about like hiding and control for <clears throat> it, it, it was crazy and, and it got to a point where you know with food and again food you have to eat three times a day right <laughs> gnarly right and uh yeah, I, I, my bottom with food was th this whole negotiation like oh i'm gonna like i'm, I'm not i'm not gonna get anything in the candy by but the fucking by the cash register mm -hmm. Not even gonna. Leave. I look over here, and there's a big bag of fucking fun-sized Butterfingers, and it oh, says fuck. it says like 65 calories per bar. And I'm like, oh, it's only 65 calories. <laughs> now, mind you, I don't even subscribe to dairy. 
you know, like I think dairy is fucking awful. I, I don't even have any, you know. Yeah, me either. But but I'm so powerless over the sugar. I'm like, oh shit. And then I buy the whole fucking bag and I ate the whole fucking bag. A whole bag of fun sized Butterfingers. <laughs> and that that wasn't even like as bad, I don't think, as when I went to go see the Joker movie with Joaquin Phoenix. I got a whole tub of caramel popcorn, which I ate in concert with a jumbo pack of red vines. Like I <laughs> fed I filled my mouth with a handful of fucking caramel popcorn, mouthful, and then I started chomping on a bunch of fucking red vines, chewing it all up together, and I ate all of it. And I'm like, okay, that's my bottom. That's my bottom. And so I finally reached out to somebody in the food program and uh, I've got a sobriety date with sugar of October 13th. Fucking awesome. Yeah, so I'm like, I've, I'm like, I, I mean, I'm, if you count drugs and alcohol as separate, I'm solidly planted in four 12-step fellowships. Your main addiction is 12-step programs at this point. <laughs> I'm barreling towards my fifth, too. Barreling towards my fifth. Because, because like, with the spend, Spending. The spending. <laughs> with the spending yeah. like i got a fucking like i just and it's not you're gonna come over to alan on one of these <laughs> i should and you're and you're gonna just be like oh what the fuck was all that mess because that like alan on like we kind of say gets to like the root of all this shit you know because i was going to all these programs all these programs obviously we have different experiences and um but they say that al -Anon covers zero to when you started using and then the other programs start when uh -huh. you start using whatever it is to anesthetize, you know? Yeah. So, like, all that inner child work and stuff, because my eating stuff was so gnarly. Nothing could, um, I couldn't do anything about it. It was just because it was all about control, and the more people tried to help me, the more I pushed them away, and, you know, it's about control. So when people try to control you, you recoil deeper into your disease, and, you know, someone telling you you're too thin, you start getting paranoid, going, like, they're just jealous, and I have to get thinner, and I'm not thin. It was just, like, <laughs> it was just wild, you know? Yeah. And uh, the eating stuff is so performative too. Like you're at dinner with someone and you're like, oh, you know, I think I'm gonna get the burger. I'm gonna get the burger. And then the waiter comes and you're like, I'll just get the salad, no dressing, just oil on the side. Like you end up just having to perform and pretend like you eat. Like it's just like exhausting. Ugh. And uh, it's exhausting for everyone, but I did these like inner child exercises where you have to write letters to your inner child and, you know, eat as if you were feeding a five-year-old. And it really just like changed my whole view on food. Wow. <laughs> and and that's like the, the, the inner child shit is for the fellowships that, that are related to behavior that you can't just cut out. That's right. Yes. Right. Because it becomes about like nourishing, not shaming. You know, there's no like you can't eat that. You should use because we talk to ourselves the way our parents probably talk to us. Right. Or the way our inner monologue used to talk to us when we didn't get what we needed mm, from our parents. I don't know. I, I, I think it would be <laughs> criminal to talk to a child the way I talk to myself. And that's what we say. We That's how we're able to get out of it. Because we just right. go like you would never talk to a child like this. How, why, if, if, right. if you said any of this out loud to a child, you would child services would come and take you to jail. Right. Why would you ever talk to yourself like that? I know, I get it. Because we're all just giant five-year-olds, right? Sure, you know? I get it. Um, but uh, And I'm so, like, and I, I, by no means would I ever, and I have before on other podcasts once, but <laughs> but uh, would I ever say, oh, don't, you know, <laughs> like, like kind of, kind of, I, I told a story on Mark Maron's fuck. What the Fuck podcast that, uh, that, I, that, I, that I asked him to cut out after the fact, and, uh, and he did. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know. Maybe yeah, it's, it's a big deal, but but I, but I'm not saying to edit it out, but I yeah. am just very sensitive yeah. to, to my partner yeah. for all, for all of the <clears throat> stuff, and I think that it, that it makes sense because to me it makes sense that hey, that's where I was, and 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 I'm so grateful for the relationship I have with her. And I love what you're saying because you know I'm in this place where you know we talk about something in program called restraint of pen and tongue where right. not everybody needs to know everything and i think right. sometimes we think like but i'm rigorously honest and i've done all these <laughs> right. you know here are my character defects like that right. does not mean you need to tell your partner everything you've ever done that's it's that's not a lie that's right. not dishonest like we are allowed to omit if it's going to um if it's going to cause except when to do so would harm others that's right so that's, yeah. you know so it's also it's like don't just puke up 
the things you've done in your past just go but I'm being right. honest and right. that's, that's not sure. intimacy right <laughs> you're just right like, and it's it's not it's less about what I share with Lux yeah because we're because we're super open and it's more what I share at a public level that's you know right. and that's certainly right. the whole world doesn't need to know everything right but in this case I, I feel it's appropriate you know and I, again like I said I would rather be somebody who identifies as having issues and, and addressing them yes you know that than not but there, there's something else that <clears throat> I was so uncomfortable about this, and I didn't speak up about that either. But but when you were promoting your special, yeah. which by the way is the most fucking incredible hour. Oh, I love you. Oh god. I mean, it's the most it's the most incredible hour. You I was actually, so psyched that you, I got to see it live ahead of time. You gave me so much confidence. I ran my hour in front of you in Vancouver. Vancouver. I was going to say Toronto, and after, <clears throat> I was starting to wonder if it was you know you when you're at that phase where you got it and then you're running it and then you kind of feel like a phony because you're sort of like right not, trapped in a script. <laughs> you're not adding anything new, and you're right. sort of like start to beat yourself up. And you said to me afterwards, I remember it like it was yesterday. You went, you're sitting on a monster. Oh well, yeah, hundred percent. And I, I was concerned about going to see your hour because that time at the Hollywood Improv when we first chatted on the sidewalk. Yeah. Like I saw your set that night, and it, you were just working it out. The Me Too movement it wasn't working. <laughs> well, well the, the Me Too movement was brand new. Yeah, and you were, you were like. Uh, coming in really hot on uh, like the you know like you know like 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 what do i i forget what it was but it was something along like what do i gotta do to get you know, you know? <laughs> no this is i know what the joke is that i ended up fucking cutting it dude it was it was, it was something really aggressive it would either bomb or kill yeah it, and it was about aziz and it was uh it was something like i heard that uh, uh this there's a celebrity who took this girl back to his house right. and they had a bunch of wine and they had bad sex and i was like who is this prince charming right like, or there's, something. There's, there's, it was it's, it's something that there was that how generationally then, a woman who's 36 sees nothing wrong with that date basically. right uh -huh. i think that that, that I, I don't remember it specifically but that sounds right and i, I remember if if i'm <clears throat> If uh, if I've got it wrong, the feeling it conjured up was like as if you were saying, "God, I just think sexual harassment is so flattering." <laughs> yeah, like something like that. Something like Take that. Take the like, compliment <laughs> and move on. You right. know, I, but I'm joking. <clears throat> right. Because then right, I do but, another forty minutes about how you shouldn't do this and you sure, should. You know, sure. It's all context. And, 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 yeah. and I'm not. I'm not suggesting that in any way that that. Uh, it was wrong or anything yeah. like but but I just remember feeling like ooh you know like she came in really hot on that <laughs> set and and then by the time by the time you were in Vancouver I was just like wow like she just fucking took what what she was working on and just crafted it and molded it into this just masterpiece and I really believe it's just so fucking impressive I I, I love I, you I love that's it. the that's but, the biggest compliment you can hear from a comedian you respect seeing something from it's like you know yeah. Embryonic stages, yeah. chipping away at the marble. For sure, you know. And the service dog analogy is fucking oh, fantastic. Right. Um, but 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 when you were promoting that special and you had the robot, right? <clears throat> like you came uh, you came over to my house to film me interacting with the robot. Oh, that's right. <laughs> right. And uh, thank you, by the way. And um, <clears throat> here, like. It, it, there was no like particular plan. There was I didn't know have any idea like what it was, but like I really wanted to be funny. Like I, I just so I wanted you know I felt like it, you know a little bit intimidated you know like uh, by the situation like you know like Whitney's over and like you know we're filming and like she's treating me as like as as a comic like sort of re respecting me as like someone who she considers to be funny and I I was just in in trial hard mode and like here I'm just like okay with the robot and I come out and like and I'm like I say to the robot like so what's gonna what's it gonna take for for <laughs> you and me to fuck or some, <laughs> something like that and I'm just like in my head I'm like why did I say that <laughs> like why the fuck how the fuck did that just come out of my mouth <laughs> you know like and uh, I remember I, I, I just remember being like that was so disrespectful to my girl that was so fucking it, it was just such a cheap approach and it was just so like just like overtly creepy and like I just was spinning in my head like oh my god the fucking and I forget if I brought it up to Lux before or after it appeared on like the Instagram what did she say 
I, and I would have cut it out. No, 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 no. But I, I, that's Meanwhile, just, she was like, I don't watch the stuff you do. I'm like, she, she's she, busy. She has her own life. Like, I, I forget if it was before or after it, it showed up on Instagram, but I brought it up with her. And I was like, and I just said, I just said, babe, like, I'm so not proud of, uh, of, of this moment. I just want you to know that I was just like in a mode of I just wanted to fucking try so hard to be funny and like whatever, just like, yeah. like, bah, you know, like be shocked and get the laugh, you know, and like, I'm just not. And, and she and she said, just like, hey, you know, thank you for thank you for saying that to me. You know, thank you for like <laughs> demonstrating that you're sensitive to my feelings. And, you know, and it just like it, it came and went without without it, you know, <clears throat> which to me is like the crux of you know an amazing relationship i was going to say perfect but we don't i don't use that word right. um is not the absence of conflict not the absence of doing things it's right. just how you can address them and how quickly you can recover like it's just amazing like the miracle of just saying hey i'm sorry about that it took me right. so long to number one even know when i was being disrespectful or crossing the line right so i'm being funny and like this is who i am right. and i'm brash and like i make sex jokes and like it's not right. about you like um but what i'm hearing from you which is just like so important and i think anyone listening in relationships that are sort of confused it took me 15 years to understand this the amount of respect in your relationship it took me so long to realize that i've been in love with people i didn't respect i've been obsessed with people that didn't respect me <clears throat> like respect is like the number one thing and it took me so long to understand that sure and i think that like uh consideration is is you know a, a part, part of it but you also <clears throat> can see yourself like you have done the work like and this is why you deserve this incredible relationship because you're not waiting for her to go hey that my friend saw that and that was weird and you're like what do you mean i'm fucking comedian like no idea who right. cares who give calm down relax it, 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 I, I, I i didn't want to i think i did wait until I, it, it it came out because like like were it to never like get used to come out like it just it would fall into the category of like you know i shouldn't need to know that and i don't know why and i probably should have been like oh i should cut this no 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 you know no. what i mean it, it, it was fine and 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 i was checking out like uh i was checking out your podcast you know i was like oh, i wonder what what you know what whitney's youtube presence is yeah because i i've like been like i was like youtube was almost made for me like it really, I, like, it's I, like incredible how hard you kill on there because it's it's I, I i you know everyone's like but youtube's mostly guys so i'm kind of trying to figure that out i mean it's it, it's uh it, I, I was i was curious because because i don't do my I just start we both are new on the bandwagon. Yes, we are. Here we are. <laughs> Perfect timing. Got him right you know, before I, pandemic rush. You know, I I just saw something recently that that said uh there are seven hundred thousand podcasts. No. <laughs> I, heard that, that's not true. I heard that around the world there is something that that is that that is a ballpark estimate of how many podcasts there are. Every fucking asshole and their mom <laughs> has a podcast this is a tr uh, true story i get i mean this is how you know a friend of mine was like oh <laughs> my trainer would like to interview you for right. their podcast i mean right. the guy that this rescue <laughs> organization <laughs> like every right. everyone's yeah. got sure and, and it, it ranks among the most annoying questions that 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 you can ask is will you do my podcast here's the thing I, <laughs> because, because your podcast is relatively new you've done what five six uh, i've re i've recorded six and put out five so let me far. tell you something about the people you're asking to, <clears throat> to take away your guilt let me remove your compunction they're all fucking narcissists who just want to be on camera and talk about themselves for two hours you're fine it's uh i thought the hardest thing in the world <clears throat> was gonna be getting people on my podcast as soon as you get a couple people everyone's egos get bruised they're like hey when am i gonna do your podcast? when or what are right. we record like they, everyone doesn't want to be the person that wasn't asked <clears throat> so they'll start coming out of the woodwork don't sure. worry I mean, it's 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 anxiety inducing. Now that you've so. had Ronda Rousey and Demi Lovato <laughs> and all these celebrities, they're gonna want to be on it so that they're in the same echelon. I I, th I think that that is uh, the, the it's gonna snowball. Yeah, I, I, I'm hoping it will because yes. at, at, at current. I just feel anxious. And you're always so good. I remember when you did Rogan, you did an episode where you talked, this totally blew my mind, um, about drug use and about how it, I might be getting this wrong, like corrodes the walls. Sure, <clears throat> exactly, 100%. I was That's like, this guy needs a fucking podcast. I remember that as the That's first thing psychosis. I thought. psychosis. 
you you said something about you think that life is designed in like cat- compartments. Yes, <laughs> compartments, and that if you take enough substances, you will erode the barriers in between the compartments, and thus open yourself up to spiritual entities where you start hearing voices. Because I believe to this day that the hallucinations, the voices, were very fucking real. A hundred percent. I still subscribe to it. Those were fucking real spirits. It talk- wasn't that the drugs mm. made you hallucinate. It's that they corroded the walls. That right. Because they opened me up to to other dimensional shit because that, I... that is totally real the problem is that it is it's it's a very crude and, and like it, it's it it opens you up to all nature of, of of said entities where you you let in really low frequency fucking demon shit because we're just like on autopilot you it's... actually like you did but the, the, in a in a sense those barriers are like protective you know like if you want to open yourself up to to more stuff like that like meditation like like mm-hmm. it's like high level frequency shit yeah and it's much more subtle whereas you just open up the floodgates and the demons come pouring in and it's like ah like the psychosis you know dude i did ayahuasca I, like i've been very again i grew up in now called home so my drug was control perfectionism like i'm an al-anon my drug was rescuing drug addicts and chasing them around and trying to get them sober, right? Um, I'm pretty fun. Uh, (laughs) You would have loved me. (laughs) 20 years ago, we would have been a great fucking match. Um, And uh, I had never done, like, really substances much. Like, I did LSD when I was, like, younger, just sort of, like, make people like me that were doing it or whatever. It was just, like, I was codependent. I was like, all right, you're doing it, I'm doing it. I cannot relinquish control, so LSD was my nightmare. Like, I was just, like, I had no fun. I didn't enjoy it. Um, But I did ayahuasca, like, three years, two and a half years ago for the first time. You and Robin Quivers. (laughs) Me? Did she just do it? (laughs) She's she's gone on and on about ayahuasca forever. Amazing. I Amazing. Think, yeah, I think uh, I figured I forget if she did it or if she wanted to do it. I think she did it. I have this weird thing with Howard Stern where because we're friends and I'm friends with his wife, I try to not listen to him because I feel like I'll become a fan. It'll be weird. I oh, did. Like I have a this is such a different experience. I'm just, like <clears throat> with that, uh, and and this will just <clears throat> create, create problems. But. but here, <laughs> But here I go. I, I used to I used to be like a regular Howard Stern guest, you know. Yes. Like, oh yeah. I used to, I, I I think I was on there like sixteen times, you know. Wow. And, and truly one of the best. I mean, ranked as like one of the well, greatest. Well, well, thank you. And 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 I had this whole routine of like I would surprise him with nobody knew what I was gonna do, and it was just like <laughs> some fucking maniac shit. And um, and uh, back then. I just, I, I never listened. I was so busy getting loaded. I was yeah. just like, whatever, like, listen to Howard Stern. And um, right around the time when Howard became uh, a judge on America's Got Talent. Right. You know? Yeah. Like, it was, it, it really, that time represented an evolution of the Stern show. And my theory is that Howard, uh, be- he became much more family friendly for having been on a network family friendly show right, as right. a judge on AGT and <clears throat> he uh, all of a sudden like the, it, it, not, I don't want to say it took away the edge but like his show evolved around that time yeah. to be really like just so A list you know yes. like right around that time like, and so so the, so the echelon of guests yeah. like that like that seat the, I should say the floor <laughs> like uh, for the guest was above me, and I could no lo- I could no longer be a guest on the Howard Stern show. But for the most part, my career has been stand up tour yeah. and uh, and and digital stuff. Yeah, and I've built like a really like pretty substantial. You'll put a video up and have like five million views in like two weeks. Just like Jesus. It's uh, I, I, I'm I'm really grateful and I've hustled. But I've you've hustled also so evolved in a way where you know, and I've seen a lot of the stuff that you've done. Like it's so hard to stay shocking and surprising like you are one of the people that I look at and I see what the YouTube stars are doing and that sounds like such an odd thing to say but like you're doing things that are super extreme and super surprising without like electrocuting rats and poking corpses Ugh. you know what I mean it's not like just <clears throat> mindless artless stunts there's it always feels like a really well thought out smart sketch 
Well, thank you. And you that did that that bring <laughs> it, 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 it's not it, sloppy. It's yeah. not just like this artless like I, I don't think anybody got got in trouble for uh for saying anything about the Stern show. I'm just still such a fan. I just I feel like Sarah Silverman the way I just worship him. You know? Like I fucking worship Howard Stern. Yeah. And and <clears throat> He's a legend, which I just don't want to listen because everyone I know, he's like a, it's like a cult. And I'm like, I guess if I start listening to the show, I'm going to start, I'm going to put him on a pedestal and it's going to make our friendship weird. Because mm. I had never, when I did the show, I had never heard the show before. Not because I wasn't, I just, a lot of people grew up listening to it in the car with their dads. Like, right. I just didn't have that experience. And I literally, the day before, when people found out I was going on, everyone called me and they were like, this is a great, most, can we, I come? Like people, right. it's like, I've done <clears throat> so many things in my life. I've met so many amazing people howard is the only time people say can i come with you right i'm like john cleese <clears throat> is on my tv show tomorrow do you want to come to that and they're like no we're good like <laughs> right howard they just want to see right and he's, he's, he's epic and, uh, and i remember the first time so i went on they were like you're gonna have to ride something called a sibian i was like i don't know <laughs> what that is you know uh no you definitely don't have to <laughs> but, but it would be nice wild. if you did <laughs> how wild it was you know like right. <clears throat> i feel like he'd love to have a conversation with you about this how men especially in the public eye who have you know colorful past of evolving for the woman that i'm you so glad that that i gotten serious about all that before <laughs> you know, like it, it's just so nice to to not be distracted by the the chasing around and the all the, just the fucking nonsense it's a like full-time job oh dude it's awful yeah but yeah i think it's it's just crazy that we both just described that that we we try not to listen to howard for such very <laughs> for, for such very different reasons you know for me it's just like i i, I have this superstitious belief that if i go back to not listening <laughs> <laughs> and if I just be like, like I don't have fucking time to be listening and being careful with the fucking serious app because I'm putting channeling my time and effort back into my fucking career to earn myself into a spot where I'm on that goddamn sofa again. He can, he can tell you're too thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> he can tell you're a fan. Right. No, I think that it's it's interesting and it's in the things he wanted to talk about are changing. You know, it the worst is when I go on there. And like like what you said about when the robot came over, the worst is when I go on there and I'm just like, anyway, so I had a threesome and he's like, duh. I just right. kind of wanted to talk about what your right. relationship's like. Like right. I'm I'm doing right. old me. Right. I think he wants this really perverted, like purient, lascivious conversation. He's right. like, no, I've evolved. And I'm like, oh, sorry, right. I haven't. <laughs> and, and, and another thing, I, I did, the things I did, I stapled my ball sack to my leg. I went in there, I fucking <laughs> set my head on fire. I d did fucking, I s swallowed five goldfish and barked <laughs> oh, them up. Like right. I stun gunned myself. I fucking like, yes. and, and and then I think now, like, it's like, no, nah, I'm good on that. Now you would go in and just cry and be yeah. a, a, a vulnerable. Right. I don't think he wants to <laughs> fucking see that, you know. But in any case, I got to pee. Okay, go pee. <laughs> go pee. And then I'm going to and then I'm gonna say about, you're going to go right here and pee. Okay. I like, this makes me think we are so close. The fact that you can just say, I have to go pee. Oh, what if I throw to an ad? We haven't done that in four months. Steve-O went to go take a shit. So now, a word from our sponsors. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Benton, it's Whitney. <laughs> I like that you're talking like that to me. <laughs> I'm doing ads, and I'm frankly sick of you not pulling your weight. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so we're going to do an ad for um, my favorite hair company, Hask. Oh, yeah, the best. Yeah, the best. So can you please do it so that I can take a fucking break? Yeah, I, I, uh, they're really good. And you know I've been using um, them nonstop because I don't wash my hair. I just use the dry shampoo. Me too. I've been using it as well. I just used another day because during quarantine, while I'm alone, I've been trying to perfect 80s hair looks. Oh, yeah? Are you using the, the spray or the dry shampoo? I'm using the leave-in conditioner to get these bouncy curls. Ooh, okay. I sure am. Okay. I'm trying to get one of those faux mullets. Wait, the 5-in-1 leave-in conditioning spray, is that what you're using? Yeah, I use it every day at the tea trail when I really like it. It leaves your locks smoother, shinier, healthier, and happier. Look at that. Ideal for those whose hair just is not cooperating lately, which is mine. This collection has an ability to instantly deliver five benefits in one lightweight spray. 
specialty blend of ingredient blend. Why am I? I'm talking like you. I miss you so much that I started stuttering. A specialty blend. A what? <laughs> a specialty blend. It's smoothing. It provides thermal protection, hydrating, detangling to prevent breakage, and it boosts shine. Are you doing? What's? Are, did you get a job on a different podcast? What's happening? How do you know all that? I just know things. Rest <laughs> assured, for those who dye their hair, this collection offers you an extra layer of defense. Against the heat and locks in moisture while styling. This way, your color can thrive. Well, see, that's what's so... I've been coloring my own uh, roots because I am known to get a gray or two because I read too much news. And when you use this, it doesn't, like, screw up all your color. Um so the leave-in conditioning spray are available in three different flavors. Argan, coconut, I do coconut, and you do tea tree. I do tea tree because my scalp gets sore and that calms it. Why does your scalp get sore? Because I have a sensitive little beta scalp. <laughs> All are color safe, free of sulfates, parabens, phthalates, phthalates. Can you pronounce that? Phthalates? Oh, phthalates. 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 No chemicals, no artificial colors, gluten formulated to meet the needs of your specific hair type. Also cruelty free. Love it. Five in one leave in conditioning spray and other has products available. Amazon.com online in store, Ulta, Walmart, Walgreens, Target, CVS. And we're excited to announce that Hask is now hosting weekly giveaways. Love it for our listeners where you can win a hundred dollar prize pack that includes shampoos, conditioners, leave in sprays, dry shampoos and more. And if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm putting it in right now. This is how I do it right kind of on the. This is how I get my 90s beach look. Hold on. I'm just doing it just so you guys can see. Um, for your chance to win. <laughs> Enter the giveaway at haskbeauty.com slash Whitney. Ooh, that it's sounds good. haskbeauty.com slash Whitney, and we thank them for supporting this podcast. Haskbeauty.com slash Whitney, and this one is my favorite color, too. It's like a pretty, like, lilac. Also, guys, get this for your girl. I promise you. She will not pick a fight with you for a while. Look how good I look. Everyone's asking me, but sorry, last thing I'm going to say about this. Hold on. I'm going to call you right back because it sounds like you're in a submarine. Um, everybody asks me how I get my hair to look cute. This is it. You just put as much of this in as possible and it makes it like super thick and delicious and sexual and voluminous. See that? And it does. You know what? Can I say one more thing about this? It The dry shampoo doesn't leave like white residue on your hair so it doesn't look like you like you know fell in a vat of baby powder it goes on like really clean see that see how much cuter my hair is getting look oh the people listening probably have no idea what's happening but look look at me on instagram and look how cute my hair looks look how thick it looks i feel like i look like um jennifer Connolly and twins remember her hair in that movie it's like super thick look at that Benton, where are my new MeUndies? Remember I told you to order me more? Which, by the way, uh, wasn't even about the ad sponsorship. They sent me some because they're uh, we're partnering with them. And then I was like, I'm never taking these underwear off. And I hate underwear. Yeah, and you haven't taken them off. You wear them in the sauna. You wear them in the pool. You wear them when you work out. No, I swear to God, one time I was so annoyed that I only had one pair that I almost took them out of the laundry and wore them inside out. <laughs> Which I don't recommend doing, but that's how comfortable me undies are. I wanted to wear the same one pr twice without washing them. <laughs> but I mean, they're extremely comfortable. Well, where the, full of me didn't uh, tell our audience how many times I've asked you to order me more, and you haven't. Uh, you've asked me three times. Okay, and and three times I have ignored it. <laughs> Were you going to get me ones that, with the little no, llamas? No, I ordered them. Yeah, I ordered them. Uh, yes, I am going to get you those, whether you like it or not. Okay, I I have. I don't even need to read this. I'm, I'm telling you. Oh, okay. So here's the here's what I do need to tell you. Me undies will deliver them. There's a membership. Okay. And it, so I know one wants to go to a store right now. Nobody wants to have to go in. They will just magically appear at your door. It's like it's like having a pervy Santa Claus drop off underwear. Yeah. You know, every, every month you get the cutest pair of underwear right in your mailbox. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Membership comes with statewide savings, early access, free shipping, and zero reasons to ever leave your house, which is the key. Just grab uh, not just underwear, guys. They don't only have underwear. They have great socks. Why haven't I gotten they those? Have, they have robes. Where's they my have pajamas, t shirts, like everything you need to be cozy in your house, me undies has it. They have onesies. Why haven't you gotten me those? 
you know, I'm really busy ordering them for myself. <laughs> Me Undies has an offer for my listeners. Any first time purchasers, you get 15% off and free shipping. Okay, 100% satisfaction guarantee. To get your 15% off your first pair, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee, you got to go to meundies.com slash Whitney. That's me, M-E-U-N-D-I-E-S dot com slash Whitney. This is how comfortable me undies are. Okay, ready? So I started kind of hanging out with this guy, this like random dude. And because it's because <laughs> it's been a while, I shaved my... Uh, what would you call? Am I allowed to say my me undies area, the area that me undies would normally touch? So I started shaving that, her and butt. it was her butt. <laughs> <laughs> so I shaved. Oh, my bikini line, and this is actually the highest compliment I can give a pair of underwear. I had me undies on afterwards. No razor burn. No rash. No rubbing. No chafing. It's very rare. I like. I've never had this experience where I shaved that area, put on underwear, and it didn't create like a freaking forest fire. Just saying. So you can shave against the grain and put these underwear on and still not look like you have some kind of horrible STD. Do you think that Me Undies wants to distance itself from that statement or leave? <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But here's the deal with me and my ads. I really believe in the products that sponsor us, and I say no to some. Some of them I say no, but I truly love this product, so I'm going to be authentic, and that's all I can really do. And if you don't, if you don't want me undies, I can't help you. It just means you hate your genitals, and that's between <laughs> that's between you and your psychiatrist and your relationship with your mom. And I'd like to stay out of it. Meundies.com slash Whitney. Again, if you don't do slash Whitney, I, I just, you're, you're, you hate me. Dude, nothing is better than just having peed on a podcast and coming back fresh. Just coming back fresh dicked. Fresh, ready to, f there's nothing worse than thinking about peeing while you're trying to be funny. <laughs> there's nothing worse. Yeah, I love these arms. I want to, he's not talking about my arms, he's talking about the <laughs> microphone arms. I feel like I want to fight with all of Rogan's fans <laughs> in his comments when people are like, she sucks. I'm like, dude, I had to pee so bad. <laughs> Give me a break. You read the comments? I don't, sometimes Oof. Rogan's got like a army of people. Most of the people that listen just like it and move on with their day. Most people don't comment, <clears> right? <throat> but he's got like a subreddit group that sort of picks apart every guest, like, in good ways and bad, you know? It's crazy. It's just, it's unbelievable. And for all the, uh, you know, the we talked about Howard Stern. Like, it's actually the one thing that you can do in my career. Yeah. It used to be like, oh, I heard you on Howard. If I was yeah. on Howard, I'd yes. hear it for the rest of that yep. whole day. Yep. But you do Rogan. That's it. It's even crazier it's wild it's yes. fucking wild i know i'll walk by like a group of construction workers and they're like joe rogan like can can we just like even the fucking political influence yes. where he says i think i might vote for bernie. biden uh, yeah Ber bernie and then i think i might vote for up. bernie and then all of a sudden bernie was the front runner that's right that's right. Not just numbers up, but in the lead. And you do this like it's, you know, I think it was Tennessee Williams who said, and I, I hope this doesn't come off pejorative, but he said that like there's three cities in L.A., New York, San Francisco and Los Angeles and the rest is Cleveland. Like most people are not able to connect with non-cosmopolitan human beings and we're on the road we meet people we do meet and greets like we know what people value we know what they laugh at like we're not coming from this elitist <laughs> place of like i'm better than you and he's not like didactic in luxury and i think that people really appreciate that and he's not pretending he always knows the answer like he'll say one day i don't know about this maybe i'll vote for this person maybe i won't vote for this person. right he's not saying like this is who to fucking vote for you're stupid right right no no he's very much he's very palatable in that way and it's, uh, he, he will say like, dude, don't listen to me. I'm a dummy. He'll describe <laughs> himself as a dummy. But however, that's so not the case. At he's all. like, he's so insightful yes. and like, it's crazy. Like he just had Tom Green on and Tom Green, I, I, I felt Tom Green really like confronted him saying, dude, look, you've got a responsibility. Like you're, you don't understand how much influence. And I think that Tom Green was specifically motivated by uh, 
how Joe Rogan said, I would vote for Trump over Biden. Yeah. And then he, Rogan went on to clarify that, hey, I would vote for Whoopi Goldberg over over Biden. I would vote for anybody yeah, who doesn't yeah, have yeah. goddamn dementia. Yes, yes. You know? But I think Tom Green was re- got really scared that How that was going to get Trump reelected or some shit. I don't know, because I, I couldn't hang in there for the, the whole thing. I was... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, know, it's... But, but yeah, it's just scary. But also, we ha- can't treat human beings like they're idiots that don't have their own opinions. And ca- you sure. know what I mean? I think that, like, you know, there's also that. You know? Well, we also have to resign ourselves to the fact that people are idiots with their own opinions. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I don't, I, I would go both ways and, and you know, because uh, I'm the first to say I just don't know about something. I think it's also like the kind of people that listen to Rogan, like, you know, like they're smart. They have the, they want to be independent thinkers and they're, you know, he is the they're largest, not zombies. Rogan, I, I heard, is the largest media outlet mm-hmm. on the planet. Yeah. Like, period. No, but, like, not like by the, a thousand, not by five thousand, by, like, like literally, like, tens of millions. <laughs> so, it's like, so it's, like, it's just funny when someone's, like, oh, my God, I'm number two on the charts behind Rogan. It's, like, but you're not right behind Rogan. You're about 50 million down. Well, here, here's the thing about being on the charts, because when my uh, podcast came mm-hmm. out, I was ranked on the charts. The, the charts are only based on new subscribers that's that right, week. That's right. That's so, right. So when you're a brand new podcast, yes. like you have a higher subscriber gain right. for that window of time. Yeah. But... That's because you're new and everybody's only just signing up for the first time. You've got like this little wave coming in. You know what I love about you? You're so like, you're so, you're such a good businessman. Like you <clears throat> care so much about understanding what you're doing. I, I, I thank you for the kind words. And, and I really, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I give a shit about everything. Like, like too you much. really take control of your business, you know, like you understand what I'm just sort of like, I have no idea. I don't know where I'm ch- ranked. I don't know. I don't understand. I don't, I don't know what any of this is. <laughs> I literally, my producer is rolling. It I, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I, if I, if I believe all of that, but, um, <clears throat> But, but yeah, I mean, it's 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 interesting, and and uh, I toyed with the idea of doing a podcast for a long, long time. You and know? what was your me too? What was your trepidation about it? Uh, it was fucking. I want to be on the bandwagon. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. am I really gonna? Am I really gonna do this? It's for, the same. A while, for a while, podcast was like that's what you did if you couldn't like. A lot of us had it. You couldn't make it any other way. But now it's to me completely the opposite. Um. It's it's interesting, and, and I and, and I really didn't want to have to fucking ask him because I would personally feel so annoyed when somebody said we're gonna do my podcast. <laughs> like no, I made I made a rule, and I was really like like you know, vocal about this. I said if I have not heard of the podcast, <laughs> the answer is no. But but then invariably I know the person, and so it's like fuck, it's just my buddy. Okay, I'll fucking do it, you know. And then like and then I, how many times? I just was fucking so just pissed. I know because I know you're driving a van nine because, at three because, o'clock. Right, well, right, and and it's fine. I have an open mind. Yeah. But then, but then, like I get there and I'm doing it because I'm the person as a friend. Yeah. And then I sit down and they take me down the same fucking beaten path <laughs> of every fucking where I'm just like, oh yeah, clown college. Let me, you know, like the, the same, just they fucking grab me and take me hostage yes. down the same goddamn fucking right. path that I've been, re- oh, I'm recording the same podcast over. And my the- thing is, if you're going to have me on, <laughs> listen to my other ones to see what I've been asked. At least do a little research so you're right. not like, so how'd you get in comedy? Is it hard to be a woman in comedy? Like I've answered <laughs> right. this 50 times. Right. And and so in any case, it's it's annoying to be asked, "Will I do your fucking podcast?" And then so then I'm there. Oh, now I'm going to be the asshole saying, "Will you do my podcast?" <laughs> and and so I said, "Okay, you know what?" I got to a point where it's like it's just so fun. I'm just I'm blowing. I'm dropping the ball by not doing that. Right. This is a deficiency in my digital profile. Yes. Yes. You know? Yes. And so I said, "Okay, I'm gonna. I got to do this, but let me at least." Make it convenient. And that was where I came up with the idea to get a camper van where it's like, hey, the studio is in a van and I can take it to you wherever and whenever is most convenient for yes. you. But I started out by buying this uh, this 
is itsy bitsy little fucking camper van. I got suction cups with the the, the mic arm stuck to the window. <laughs> the idea being what it was going to be like, I'm going to drive around with my guests. Because <laughs> to me, that's my biggest thing. It's not that I don't want to do your podcast. It's just driving there, driving back. <laughs> it's now it's like a four hour door to door thing. Oh my God. But the thing was that I was trying to podcast while driving. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 okay, <laughs> so I got so I've got this fucking microphone. Yeah, both me and my guest. Yeah, it, 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 it it's there's just the microphone just right in between <laughs> our face and an airbag <laughs> and we're driving and I'm the worst driver ever. So like, I'm gonna, plus I'm distracted because I'm trying to podcast while I'm driving. So I'm gonna fucking crash into something, the airbag's gonna explode and you're gonna have this fucking Shure SM7B, whatever the fuck it's called. Like it's gonna be fucking through your orbital of fucking, I mean, dude, it's the worst. And then on top of that, in, in, inevitably there's gonna be the point where the, the guest is is either <clears throat> just over oh i didn't realize the time or like yeah. like wow i'm not i'm not gonna take kindly to what you've just said i'm gonna go ahead and call it call it here yeah i'm done and it's gonna feel really fucking kidnappy when at that point you got to drive them back to, <laughs> to where you you know <laughs> yeah 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 i was like this this doing it while driving thing is not the ticket no not the ticket so and then i got into tattooing so i so i decided that i need a bigger thing anyway so are I'm you gonna, tattooing people oh my god and and, and i'm like surprisingly like uh i'm fascinated by this did you i try so fucking hard did you practice on oranges isn't that what you practice on yeah, you can you can but for me, I had the luxury of uh, during my meet and greets, yeah. which I still do, <laughs> like they, like m more than a few times, people have come through the line with a tattoo gun. Hey, will you tattoo me? Amazing. Like, sure, man. Fuck it. You know, I don't care. I've tattooed a bunch of people who just made it easy to grab the gun and do it. I can already tell that you're good at it because of the way you hold your fingers <laughs> like this. You don't do this. You do this. Ah, uh, what did you just do? I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah like, you're like overhanded. <laughs> I mean, and, and, and that's not to say that I got like good because so many people presented me with the opportunity to tattoo them. But one time, the last time I, I, I had a guy at my meet and greet, and, you know, show up with a tattoo gun. It's not a gun. It's a tattoo machine. Oh. And, and, and the last time, then I thought, you know, now I'm like in the YouTube game, like really like, yeah. The, looking for ideas for I said what if I made a YouTube video where I go to set out to tattoo like give give crazy tattoos but like what will be compelling about it is that I'm gonna try as fucking hard as I can to do the best job I possibly can yeah and I got at somebody who opposed I, to what well like <laughs> I mean you, you would think just like oh you know yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have to let that guy I was like okay but but it's like I, I'm, I'm did, I did two shows tonight and now it's gonna be fucking two in the morning yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a tattoo that like we can fit in the and into one Snapchat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I scribbled Yo Mama's name on his ass, and, and that was that was done. Can you I know? ask you, since you're an expert, because I'm in a fight with someone about this, is the lighter touch tattoos that are becoming kind of in the zeitgeist, like the super light ones, do they fade faster? When you say lighter touch, I don't think that that's got anything to do with the touch itself as much as with... Uh, thicker lines, that's what I should be saying. Are thicker, are these thin line tattoos that we're kind of seeing on Instagram now? You gotta ask Lux that one. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> ask her. I'm gonna yeah, ask I'm, not, I'm not exactly expert yet. I'm still an apprentice. <laughs> but, uh, I, here, and, and, Let's ask her. I only, like, I only want a tattoo... Like really fucking. I want. I really, really want to get a tattoo shit. because my deal is like I want to get a bunch of tattoos in okay. quarantine. Here's, so here's my portfolio. But um, <laughs> <laughs> that's actually really fucking good. It, it, it leads the procession for good reason. That's it. And and uh, you spelled it right and everything. Yeah, butt man for the odd. Did you have to? You stencil it first though. Yeah. Of and course. then you, you draw it on. And you can swipe through. We'll make it quick so that we don't alienate any of our listeners. No, they'll love it. <laughs> <laughs> and viewers. Yeah. I mean, that is fucking amazing. Is that a circumcised or uncircumcised? I'm looking uh, at a that's a, banana, yeah. you guys, banana that's also dick. a dick. Have you seen the Takashi 6 9 portrait yet? <laughs> because it's a pretty proud job. Dude, that is, how did it long to take you to do that? 
Uh, I want to say an hour or two. That's mm. fucking great. And then now the Wendy <gasps> portrait. Oh my gosh, this is what I want. I want all my dogs on my forearm. <laughs> no, you don't. I don't? Is <laughs> no, that a bad don't. idea? Do so If you're going to get a forearm tattoo, get it like Lux. Dude, this is fucking awesome. Thank you. Did you always know you could draw? I, I mean, again, that's tracing, so. Yeah, but you trace uh, it and then fill it in. I mean, that. Right. Dude, this is really impressive. That one, that one is the the. Uh, it's a video game, um, <laughs> icon. I got I got one of these brand deals. <laughs> Dude, this is real. I thought this was gonna be bad. I thought this was gonna be an awkward moment of the podcast. What? <laughs> I thought this was gonna get awkward. I thought this was gonna be uncomfortable. It's, it's not good, but it's better than you would expect from Stevo. Here's the thing. I. <laughs> 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 I know I can't tell if it's good or if I'm just surprised or pleasantly right. surprised. no this is legitimately good it is a dick coming out of a banana but even then it's very well it's a well I don't know I think that's dick. my shakiest lines I did that in the dicks are shaky I mean yeah. it's it's a <laughs> I only see dicks drunk, so this is what right. a dick, <laughs> this is what a dick looks like to me exactly on a, on three hard kombuchas. I why, so can I not get tattoos? Is it not attractive for a woman to have her dog? Lux has an exceptionally fucking attractive forearm tattoo. Lux's uh, standards for art are are really. But she's just like has excellent taste. She does. She just has really yeah. good taste. Maybe she can help me because I want to get yeah. their names because the tattoos I have are white because I kind of chickened out, so I got them all in white. Oh, how about that? Yeah. So there it's, you go. It's more like scarification, really. <laughs> and it hurts. I learned twice as much as a regular fucking tattoo, but so I have a love you in white on my forearm, and then I have a anchor here, and then I got this when I never, I will never take a Xanax again. My first and only time taking a Xanax. It's I funny. I, I, my back tattoo of this, uh, this uh, my full back portrait of me. Do you really? Are you not familiar with it? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I have not. What? <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen this before. Yeah. This is a fucking amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, uh, that was one of my ideas for the first Jackass movie. <clears throat> and um, it, it, it was like 16 hours all told. Yeah. Like well. 16 plus. And uh, I, I was across four four visits yeah. to this wow. legendary artist. Who was it? Jack Rudy. Mm -hmm. And um, on one of the it was it was really three sessions because one of the visits was a false alarm where I thought that taking Xanax would help with the pain. Cause this was the most fucking painful. I, like I, you would think, like for all the crazy jackass shit I've done that that hurts. Like, what was the most painful stunt? It was I, I, I would venture to say that my fucking back tattoo was the most painful shit I've. Because it's like a tedious, nettlesome pain. The, the, and the back is just a... a Nerves. A, yeah, the, the back tattoo. Uh, and it went on forever. And, and I was the biggest bitch that this guy ever fucking had in his chair. He was just like, I thought you were supposed to be some kind of fucking tough guy. Like, you're the, <laughs> you are the most like annoying, most maddening fucking bitch that I've ever had in my chair. <laughs> like, he didn't say that out loud, but yes. I, could hear him. I could hear him. I could hear him thinking it. <laughs> Through the voices, because the walls yeah. had corroded. I could hear the voices. <laughs> um, my god i could fucking hear him and uh and and then so it hurts so bad and i would go in for the next session thinking like oh my god i'm so dreading this like what can i do to make it hurt less and i took a bunch of xanax to thinking it would help with the pain yeah but there i was just fucking falling out of the chair and he said dude get the fuck out of here shit he said get the fuck out of here i can't tattoo a guy who's slumping and like falling out of the chair flaccid body you fucking asshole <laughs> I, I, I honestly think that guy just disliked me so much, and it was the worst. I mean, it. Everyone wants it because I did a thing where I was like, "What do you want to ask me to ask Steve on the show today?" And so much was I was like, oh, this "Stuff he's already answered so many times." <laughs> but I am so curious about your relationship with pain and fear because I heard you talk about fear earlier, and it kind of surprised me. Like when you were just like, "I was fearful about something," and I just was like, "Oh God!" Right. <clears throat> I just picture you as being someone who's so fearless. Like, what what's on your list of fears? I mean, the uh, pain doesn't really seem like one of them. Physical pain. I, I'm not like any like particular like uh, pain, you know, 
I don't have any like threshold, any high threshold for pain. I just have like such a, a an absurd like hunger for attention. It's mm-hmm. just that like that's what drives me. Like it's not that I don't feel pain, and for that matter, if I didn't feel pain, or if any of my buddies that that uh, we did jackass, like. <clears throat> If in, in the absence of pain, there would be no reaction, which is what makes the footage compelling. You know, in the absence of fear yeah. of the, you know, it would just be boring to watch. And it's the fact that we're not like we're not like uh, fearless or, or or like, you know, immune to pain. Like we're actually like we really have that that uh, trepidation. We really have that that fear, that reaction, you know, I think that that's what makes it compelling. We're not like particularly tough guys. We're just like such fucking attention whores. Like, <laughs> I love it we'll all costs. So we'll do it, you know, and, that, and, and I guess for, like what drives us is a little bit different for you know each of the guys. But uh, yeah, I'm not, uh, I, I feel pain very much as much as anybody else. And um, I guess like, uh, I guess I, I, I certain kinds of pain I can tolerate better than than the average person, in some way. I don't know, but I'm just willing to. I'm willing to do it, and uh, I'm not like an adrenaline junkie or a thrill seeker, really. <laughs> But I'm just an attention whore, you know, because I don't enjoy. Like I, I, I'm terrified of roller coasters. Oh, won't fucking worst, do it. Won't worst, do it. Gross. Fucking hate it. But also, there's a bunch of other people on them, and there's no camera. I yeah. do. <laughs> like, bun- bungee. Jump- there's a camera, a GoPro bungee on it. Bungee jumping, <laughs> biggest fear ever. Bungee jumping. I, I, have you jumped out of a plane? For my for my new hour. Oh no. For for my new hour, I did all these new stunts. <laughs> oh no. And I made a lid called the Bucket List Tour. And um, and so like the the it was like this bottom of the barrel stunts, and I was like the first like the the first <laughs> joke of my hour is, you know, guys, I'm in a fucked up situation. I'm Steve-O in my forties. <laughs> 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 you know, it's bad. It's fucking awful. You know, like Jesus Christ, this is not okay. And uh, you know, I feel like I gotta you know. I, I gotta hurry up before it gets creepy to watch me do these things. <laughs> you know? Like I'm running out of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I'm, I'm shitting my so pants I'm, on purpose. Soon I'll just be so shitting my right. pants. So I'm going all out. You yeah. know, I'm just knock out like the unfinished business. Love it. And there's very few ideas that I had that were like sitting around that n- never happened, and, and for very good reasons. But one of them was, and secretly it was because I was afraid of skydiving. I don't want to fuck with it. So, I, so whenever anybody asked me, "Have I ever been skydiving?" my 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 go to answer was, "Nah, fuck that. Everybody does that. That's not a stunt." Ooh, it's basic. It's basic. I said, I said "It's just too basic for me." Ooh. When it when the reality was that I just don't fucking want to do it. I don't want any fucking part in it. Leave me alone. <laughs> you know. So I built in, I built into the to to my resistance to skydiving. I said, "It's basic." I said, if I ever go skydiving, because the first time you do it, you have to have a guy strapped onto your back. That's right. The tandem guy. Right. I said, if I ever go skydiving, I'm going to be butt fucking naked (laughs) with a dude on my back, furiously jacking off. (laughs) And I'm going to fucking time it with the dude on my back jacking off such that like I'm a simultaneously falling out of an airplane while I'm coming everywhere. Uh, <laughs> and and uh the come hit the tandem guy? I he described that uh he had some on his wrist. <laughs> <laughs> the camera seemed to indicate that it, <laughs> it went into uh you know, the one mountain on the side of the plane. <laughs> And um, what were you thinking about? I brought a I brought a DVD player with me. This was my exception. Okay. To the to the no porn. To the porn, yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. This was my this was my one. But I love the idea that you've been off porn for so long that you went to like Jenna Jameson. Like you haven't caught up <laughs> to the new porn yet. Um, it was, dude. It was it, it it was fucked up. I ended up like not even realizing like like that the title of the the DVD I chose was like Anal Destroyers Two. <laughs> <laughs> so, but are you gonna be able to follow what's going on if you haven't seen Anal Destroyers One? <laughs> I mean, it, like it just it was it was uh, a it was a crazy thing, and 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 the the the, the levels the layers of this. I mean, it's just like Amazing. and and the hour that I do is uh, 
it's it's the story of these just absurd ideas that were for so many years too much to yeah. actually go through with. Yeah, you know, so it's kind of like wow, what was too much? It's mm-hmm. like an interesting, mm-hmm. and and like there's nary anything on the list of stunts that I did for this new hour that that one way or another didn't have implications. Yeah. on my relationship with Lux, like Lux had a real tough time with I'm going skyjacking. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, she never suggested I not do it, but right. but it was a tough one, you know. And I uh, and I was really sensitive. Like, um, well, I remember the first time I I saw you performing some of this. Uh, you were on stage, just killing, telling a story about when you proposed to her. You shit on a fan, and it, right, right. It, like hit her in the face. And I just remember being like, "This I, girl I, is fucking cool." I described that as as that's how I knew she was the one. Yeah, it's just it's so- when I filmed when when I filmed once and for all, the shit hit the fan. <laughs> <laughs> and like I got, I got like a little crew of people, and and like this, the first little fucking droplet of shit hits the fan, goes flying, <laughs> and everybody runs <laughs> except for Lux, who just <laughs> just fucking holds her ground with a big old smile on her face. But that is the key. <laughs> like honestly, I don't care what you think is funny, but if you're in a relationship, you guys have to think the same shit is funny. Yeah, dude, I, I'll say something. Like out of everything that I've said on this podcast, which Lux like it's just categorically not a fan of i will tell you the like, i'm about to say the one thing that will mortify her above don't ruin my friendship with her no, we no, have no, a no. separate friendship without Listen, you i mean i when i say mortify her th- I, I really say this i'm beaming with pride i we've been together for for over three years mm-hmm. you asked how long we were together before we before i proposed it was January 20th that I proposed to her and our first kiss was February 5th. So it was just shy of a year together. Yeah. Um, and uh, only in the last mm, month, two months. <laughs> 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 Audibly. Was it an accident the first time? I don't know. You'd have to ask. Can we get her in here? Yes, hold on. Can we get her in here? I don't. Well, no, we can't. You, okay, that's going to be ambushing her. That's going to be a fight in the car. No, no, you're, no. I don't think so. You're already talking. Let's not. <laughs> okay. Do you think? All right, we can ask her if she wants to, to if she wants to cut out. I'll say, I'll say, hey. I'm I feel this. like if Lux wanted to be up here, she'd be up here. No, no, she, 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 she not, needs to be up here. She does not have the same desperate need for attention you and I. <laughs> she's fucking self-contained. <laughs> she's sitting by the pool, fine. She's like, I don't oh, need sh- to- Shit, I, I, uh. Did she text? No, 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 uh. I mean, I have to let you go at some point, but I have right. like a couple more questions for you. Okay. About her, so. Right, I really want her to be here. That's the sweetest thing. And my question for you, I ask this to all the guys on the show that are married, um, because uh, <laughs> we're faced down here. Women always want to know when, when was it clear she? You're like, I can't, I can't. Oh my god, look how is. beautiful she is! I know she's the <laughs> most gorgeous. We're talking about you. Hello. Uh, we're talking about you. We're talking about how he shit on you during uh, his proposal. How much trouble am I in for? <laughs> for <laughs> we can cut it. We can cut it. We. I want to maintain okay. my friendship with her. How much trouble am I in for saying that we've been together for over three years? But I know, and I'm beaming with pride when I say this. It was really hard for him to say it, and he's I, really I'm, worried. I'm so it. proud that our relationship has reached the level that in just the last <laughs> one or two months you I had, know where the fuck you're going with. <laughs> <laughs> you like you 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 unapologetically proudly and audibly toot <laughs> and i when, when she does it like it i melt oh. <laughs> i melt because like that's intimacy <laughs> that is intimacy and you're vegan so this is very no, intimate. And, and, and neither is her vegan oh, okay i was gonna say there are some definitely right but yeah oh my god babe i love you so much but i just want to know is was it the first one an accident you know i don't even remember <laughs> But I, I bet her farts so. are so I cute. So. I've never smelled one. I was like, I nah, would nah, 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 expect one. that to be like as audible as it was. 
his reaction was like just over the moon. Like he loves it, which is weird. But and well, I can't believe. Um, talking about this right <laughs> <laughs> here's what I'll say. that's when it's love i think a lot of people are always like trying to figure out like what do i show in front of my man what do i not show in front of my man the thing is that if it's the right person it's gonna be cute instead of gross like you should be able to do that <laughs> well right i mean i think that what i love about it so much is that the the, the, the idea of the woman who who I love, like uncomfortably suppressing like the urge to fart, you know, like, like having like, you know, that pain in her stomach or like, or anything like, like for her to be like, Hey, you know what? It's like, I want her to know, like, babe, I got you. I got you. You fucking let it rip. But she let it, let has it rip like a because beautiful I, perky little butthole. And I feel like her farts are just little unicorn beeps. <laughs> little. Oh my God. She's so beautiful. It's just like a, she, my girl is my girl is like, so beautiful. Like to say there's like a duck in here. It's like it's like a little quack. <laughs> 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 That's not what my farts sound like. That's not. Mine's like a llama being slaughtered. Yeah. I, I want everyone on the YouTube version. And then also I really she really captured my heart when you guys did this YouTube video that was a prank where her tampon was falling out like around people and look i've done prank shows i did we ambushed you with that so badly i was like man this Love i was it. like i was like this footage on its own is like it's it's not like they're like it needs another like another level another dimension to really like make this video count and i was yeah, like just getting like that. turning it into a reaction video would give it another layer and i was like who do we get and i was just like man a woman who can like kind of bring to the male audience like some perspective like some you know to be like yeah. to see a woman react I think for the male viewers would, would help uh, and I just called up hey wait can you come I didn't tell you what it was can you come over I want to ask you a question on camera and just I ambushed you with it and it was kind of fucked up to do that um, no I think that's it was dope that's real you friends were, and you, I could have said no and you, I didn't you were so hilarious in that and, I, and, and that video that video performed really poorly I, I've come to realize because used tampons are a little much. <laughs> <laughs> like they're just used tampons. Guys, guys are cool with a lot of shit, but once you start fucking, <laughs> once you start soggy, <laughs> bloody. Once you start, what do you call it? Plus. What do you call it? Like uh, bra brandishing? <laughs> like uh, like well, what's the word I'm looking for? Once, but yeah, once you start fucking hemorrhaging. Dropping, yeah, once you start dropping bloody <laughs> tampons. <laughs> dude, it, was, it was just like to me, I just I have seen some ballsy shit in my day. <laughs> The, most <laughs> of my shot came from Lux doing the fucking prank and not breaking, dude. I was like, I wouldn't have been able to do that. Yeah. <clears throat> like that was, I was like, this bitch is like next level. Honey, when uh, um, Whitney like started crying, like her eyes, like you could see them tear up when I told her that I, when I said that, uh, I, I spent all this time working to become the man that the love of my life deserves. Oh, I know that's I love that, babe. Isn't that the I yeah. can't. That's going to make me cry again. I um yeah, I just like I yeah. Your partner, I, I clearly appreciate that. So. I described it as such. I described it as such, and I even said like out loud that that I I feel like just like you know anxious and, and awkward to describe having like you know this this shitty past where where I aspired to be a scumbag, you know. But like what what I feel so grateful for and and so passionate about is that I, I got to work to preemptively become the man who you deserve you know and and uh to, you, yeah by the way lux the viewers are gonna want you to write a book they're gonna be like how the fuck has she done that what is this what, <laughs> what is she doing how do we get our men to behave like this <laughs> jesus she runs a tight ship oh my god i, I do want to write a book so i'll be, I'll be sure please to write a relationship sure. book i will fucking read it <laughs> what are you yeah. doing are you doing kegels what is it <laughs> 
<laughs> What's Kegels? It's when you uh, squeeze your vagina to make it small. Oh, you tighten it. like more of a butthole thing. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you could do. <laughs> Hopefully your butthole's already tightened. Yeah. Hopefully it's not so loose you need to tighten it up. Well, Lexus is great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, now, now we're, um, yeah. I mean, the farts, I mean, the farts sounding like that means the butthole is on point. Okay. Yeah. I mean, dude, like, I, like, I love, I love it when she toots. That is so cute. Well, this is really throwing a wrench in my whole theory because I was like, I need to be more feminine in relationships. I need to start fa stop farting and peeing in well, front of guys. Well, it, it takes a world work it up to it. It was three years in. It was three yeah, years yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what was so significant about that breakthrough is that three years. You pee in front of each other? Uh, oh that, like, uh, we do double On decker. each other. Okay. We do double decker. <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> she sits down and then I sit on top of her and push my wiener through. I pee through her legs. I mean, granted, we only did that for camera, but. <laughs> I think that's video. We'll be sure to show you. Okay. Right. But you don't uh, poop in front of each other. We have not pooped in front of each other. I mean, I will. Or you pooped on me. <laughs> <laughs> when you proposed marriage. The Why not? most I... important day of my life. No, the, what, what, what told me that I needed to propose to her was that she just fucking stood there and... <laughs> <laughs> and, and she even she advanced for the to get the shots. Leaned in, <laughs> leaned in. Yeah, that she didn't. But she didn't budge. But <laughs> but to move in for a better shot. Didn't flinch. <laughs> That's a warrior. She yeah. is a fucking warrior. She's wearing a mini skirt, and she she at one point like checks. She goes, "Oh, do I have shit in my vagina?" <laughs> <laughs> that was the moment. <laughs> that is a UTI waiting to happen. Oh my God. What's She's going on with the wedding? Are we having a wedding? I don't know Wait. what I was thinking. Just no protective layers at all for that. We, uh, we're, like, we're, we're, we're belligerently, stubbornly waiting until we buy our land for, to open up our animal sanctuary. Love it. Love it. To do a wedding. Right. We want to get married on that. Like, cause I got a vasectomy because we don't want to have kids. Mm -hmm. That was another bucket list. But item. you have your goats and you've got your dogs. Right. And, you and I'm glad too that like we're taking our time. We're like, we're, we have, we built a little barn at our house. We've got three goats. We've got four dogs, two cats. I desperately want five chickens. Yeah. But you gotta have it. them in a spot. Those, those Yodis will get them. So you gotta have right. them. Right. Lux is, Lux is the voice of reason here. She's yeah. like, look, I do so much the, the most of the work. Yeah, I, fucking yeah, right, right, right. You fucking Stop asshole. Stop giving me chores. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want the chickens too, but I also... She know. said, I'm not prepared to add to our workload. We should just get Lux up here. Yeah, get up here because I know you guys, I have to let you out at some point, but I just want to ask you one question about, come up here if you want. Yeah, she, you guys finish up. See, she doesn't, she's not a narcissist. She doesn't care. She's like, <laughs> she, she doesn't hate herself. She's like, dude, I'm chilling. I yeah. have self esteem. <laughs> I don't need to take my shirt off for there's a some, podcast. There's I'm something good. so wrong with us. <laughs> like comics in general. She's like, huh? it's seven o'clock on a Tuesday. I'm chilling. <laughs> I'm not tap dancing for strangers. Cool. It was great. So. Uh, Yay! Okay, honey. I, yeah, we'll be done soon. Take your time. All right. Love you. Because I'm just so curious, especially, love you. Especially with everything we've talked about, like a wedding, like for me as an entertainer, was I was really struggling with it because I was like, well, it's got to be funny and it's got to be this and I have to have a this. And it was like this weird thing where I was like, I can plan a TV show, I can write an hour of entertainment, but like planning a wedding, like I kept going, like, I don't know what people want from me. I have to entertain people. Am I going to be funny? Like, it really fucked with my that, head. Dude, you're so female. You're, like, you're not like that. <laughs> that's such a fucking female thought, you know? <laughs> I don't get it. Like, what's so? It's it's like the, I, I, and and I, I I I was like, I have to train my dogs to like bring the ring. Dude, <laughs> we, women and fucking wedding dresses. Like, oh, wow. how much thought can go into this? this garment that you're going to wear once. I know, but you have to understand. To the we're, exclusion. We're no. conditioned to believe we only start to matter as a person when we put that garment on. From dolls and Barbies and American girls, we're taught we're only valuable as people once we earn that garment. Right. I mean, it's, there's a whole word for that. Hag. All right. <laughs> Hag is hag? someone who has not achieved that. Spinster, hag, 
you old cougar, all that shit. And if you right. just have a photo of you in that dress, people are go, okay, she's worth what? She's a right. You know what I mean? Like we, it's, it's crazy. It's like a guy either getting a tattoo or a scar on his face or getting in his first bar fight or whatever, having a big dick, whatever it is. We have been. If we don't have that garment, we're not lovable. It's crazy. We're not fuckable. You know, it's really. It's really, I mean, even before I was engaged, anyone. And, and, the, and the, the, the wedding, it's like this, it's like an afternoon. It's a fucking. That's their day. Right. That's the one day they get to have photos taken of them. <clears throat> People right. bring them presents. Like, I feel like in their whole life is about looking forward to that. I, I'm so excited to marry Lux, though. Like, and, and I don't give a fuck about the wedding dress. I don't give a fuck about the, the wedding. I just want to be married to her. Yeah, that's you so know? cool. And, and we're not in any, like, big rush because like it, it the, the idea of our future being like a, our, our little animal sanctuary and, and to your point about about like how there are you know the founder syndrome i'm not sure what that means but the um the idea that there are just people who go about like with good intentions just the wrong fucking way they bring in a bunch of animals and they don't know how to take care of these animals that's not you though because you're too self-examined these are essentially hoarders these are essentially people that are exploiting and using animals for their own either financial gain to get donations right. that they're not even giving to the animals or or like, I mean, there was a guy, this motherfucker uh, was going in, a rescue person with a lot of followers on Instagram. I'm not going to blow him up right now because I already destroyed his life. Uh, but he, not his <laughs> life, but I stopped him from being able to keep getting animals from shelters. He would take dogs to vets and say, please amputate one of the legs. They go, well, he doesn't need to. And they he ask for it so that he could post videos of like i saved this dog and now it has three legs because he was fucking blowing up on instagram because the three-legged dog videos do very well i mean this is there are some people oh that are my pathologically God. insane founder syndrome is when you get so drunk on the attention you're getting from being a hero that you just essentially start uh having magical thinking and actually abusing the very animals that you are supposed to be saving it's like hoarders when you when you are i think that there's a lot of just sort of ignorance yeah. too where people aren't even like you know like that that way you just described sounded just maliciously fucking wrong sick i think that there are people who are innocently ignorant yeah yeah and, and i don't want to be that you know like <clears throat> I, I don't want to be that so and you never would be because the kind of person <clears throat> who says that never will be that do you know what i mean like you're already just too self-aware you know and too like on top of your own shit, you know, cause I can try, I, I do it even I'm, you know, I want so badly to rescue an animal. I've had my ear bitten off. I've had dogs get in fights. I've had dogs rip other dogs faces off, you know, just because I want so badly to help that I, what? What's I'm, happening? I'm, I'm, you are so upset. See, <laughs> okay, can I tell you something? Motherfucker, you just told me that I'm so female wanting a wedding. He can't even focus without looking at this fucking gadget. This is the most male shit I've ever seen. Just suck its dick already, dude. Just put it inside. Just take it. You can have it. I guess I'm just sitting here going like I'm I'm single now and I'm gonna have to date again. I realize I'm gonna have to <laughs> listen to guys talk about gadgets and pretend <laughs> I give a fuck. I mean, right. you just you seem so happy about this. Yeah. It's just who fucking cares? <laughs> like who fucking right. gives a fuck? But you're so happy and in love. Yeah. Yeah. You, I mean, just this is wild. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I just I'm so happy for you <laughs> that this is bringing you this kind of joy yeah. because I fucking hate like the, I can never figure out the arm. I'm always telling my <laughs> producer I feel like I'm hitting it like, you know, uh, no, it's a, it was one finger. I feel like it's attacking you, me. You I can feel, move around with, with one finger. I feel claustrophobic. <laughs> like, I don't I feel and then and then I actually get mad at the mics because I hear myself in the podcast. I'm like, oh, God, those mics are making me sound loud and nasal. And people are like, no, that's just how you sound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, like on on Rogan, he's got the the mic arm coming in from above, yeah. which is like kind of like, I mean, he, he he works his way around it. It's fine. Yeah. yeah evidently, he's doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever he's doing, can we just do that? Right, but but the, but this is so great because it comes in from underneath. Yeah. It's like super cheaper than than the the one Rogan uses. I feel like my producer paid you to say this because for the last two months I've been like, I don't like that the arm. It comes in from underneath. And if you want it to come in from above, it will. 
And and I'm just I just think it's fucking fantastic. I can't this wait like, to have this them is on. make this is really making me lose a lot of leverage with my producer because this has okay. been like an ongoing thing where he's like, trust me, this is better. And I'm like, I don't. Think if you're if you're starting a podcast, if you have a podcast, everyone listening those, has a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you're right. You're right. So for your podcast, guys, <laughs> for, and, and and these these ones with like the where it's like you can see the spring on it, and it's like there's just that mm. fucking. Nasty. I just oh, like, when people, <laughs> people hold the microphone. Uh, oh god. That is to me the most garbage shit you can do is oh, just be god. holding like two people sitting down holding microphones. You're just like what the Yeah, I wonder like I, so I've satisfied my like uh, the, the, I've covered the, the FedEx. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> o C white. And you have I walk in here and dude the guy like I, I've got him on speed dial, the, the, the vice president of uh, of sales and marketing. For, yeah. for these mic arms. And okay. the first thing I did was take pictures and text them to my, my homeboy. How much longer do I have to hear about that? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. No, I'm, I, I'm <laughs> glad that I'm watching this because I've been off, I've been on the bench for a while dating and I know a lot of being in a relationship is happening. You, you were recently engaged. Engaged, yeah, I was engaged. And, uh, and, and what happened there? I mean, I just, it, I still don't know how to articulate it. Let's talk about the mic arms. So I love how this is is just so right. bendy. No, it's just it's just I I still don't have a way to articulate it. And I'm I'm part of my recovery is being able to say I don't know. Hey, all good. You know, no, who knows? Maybe you didn't have the right person. Maybe I just need to live on your farm with you and Lux, <laughs> and we'll just tattoo each other all day. And don't you have a farm like as well as this? Until I'm able to get a what you're gonna get like a full farm because if you have horses, someone has to be around all the time. Right. They can colic. Right. Like I mean, they're just very delicate, and you know they're they're ambitious. Yes, in, in the in the world of uh, of. You and know. it's a wild amount of shit. I mean, it's a it's expensive. It's expensive, it's, and I want to do that. I want to do donkeys. I want to do horses. I want to do the whole thing. But um, I probably need a couple years to get that. Get that land. Right. Get that land. I love how unapologetically just animal loving you are. Is it crazy? Well, <clears throat> do people think I'm crazy? I don't think so. I think that it's, I, I think because of the way you do it is not preachy. I could name some people yeah. who are just really tough to follow not because sure. it's like, just stop, you know, not like sure. the whole like militant vegan thing I think is, uh, is, is, is a little bit. It, to it, me, it, sh it, it makes the people that you actually could convince or right. that you could interest shuts them down and makes them not it it stop i shut down when people yell at me and preach right. me it's it's there, there's there's a real feeling that if you're not vegan enough you know that like where we start like actually alienating people who are on the same fucking team that's exactly it so i i look and i don't post most of my animal rescue stuff because a lot of the reason i'm able to get animals out of uh, abusive situations is the agreement i say is i won't put this on social media your name will not be involved give me the tiger and not, or give me the horse, nothing else will be said, right? So that's a big part of it. So most of it is anonymous. So, but I do try to post if I'm trying to get a dog a home or trying to just go, yeah. hey, we're in quarantine, great time to foster a dog, you know, like um, never want to bully people. But because I have so many animal people sort of in my world, which I'm grateful for, but I'll get messages where if I'm wearing a shirt, people go, you're wearing a silk shirt and that's worm rape. And I'm just like, okay. Right. You lo like I I'm, I'm proud of myself for not even having noticed that you have animals on your shirt because like I've just not <laughs> I like uh you're not, I, I not once have I looked at your breast. You're two hours. like Lux if Lux doesn't write a book, if you're you have blinders on in a way that I'm not even a woman to you. He has not even looked below my neck. I mean, granted, this is probably just the least sexual you know, yeah, I mean, <laughs> this I managed to neuter myself with this shirt. But I just mean I'll be wearing something or or if someone sees me eating honey, they'll be like, That's bee rape. I'm right. Like, I post videos like I, taking bees out of the pool. Like I'm I got side. in so much trouble. Okay, it was it was when I was in that same fucking theater in Vancouver, and uh, someone uh, came through the line and they said, "Hey, you know something like uh, like uh, are you are you still vegan?" Or and I was like, "Oh, well, you know, like one second when I got cats, and then I was just like." I was like, fuck it, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I, I just, I, you know, I became pescatarian. 
I feel like, you know, like, I gotta feed my cats. Well, yeah. I gotta feed my cats me. Like, I, I think my dogs, like, I, I just don't, they, they don't fucking dig vegan dog food. I, 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 part of the reason I don't eat red meat is I feed so much red meat to my dogs. And so I try to just go like, okay, this is about least like, that. Yeah. And also, I, 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 I like uh, go as far as fish yeah and i also like oh sorry chicken I mean, like we've been doing some chicken lately. I, but also we tour a lot so there's times where it's like and because i had such crazy eating disorder stuff like if i'm in an airport and i the only choice is like chicken soup or like diet coke like i gotta i gotta do that or else i'm in the slippery slope of my eating what's disorder. the diet coke like that? just like if i'm in a you know the tulsa airport and there's right. only a sabaro pizza and a hudson news right like i can't just only drink a diet <coughs> coke for lunch right. because i'm like not eating chicken like that gets into a whole other unhealthy right. sort of thing, um, but uh, but yeah, and I also it, it I also think people just need to be on their own, right? And, and part of it too. I told this this girl that like you know I just the line got blurry. I'm like I eat fish. I actually subscribed to the belief that fish is good for me. Yeah, you know it's certainly better than all the fucking like fake mock meat bullshit. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really not good for me. Yeah, and uh, you know so like eggs and fish, and then it was like. <clears throat> And then, and then I didn't even think anything of it. Yeah. You know, I, I think that the, she came back through the line again, just talked to me again to say how she disapproves fish, fish or, you know, sentient or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. And then the next day I got on the airplane and now I'm seeing things like on like Instagram, whatever it was. Like, uh, oh, he's not fucking vegan anymore. It's like he's a fucking traitor. He's a hypocrite. Yeah. He's And I was just like, wait, what? And then... Uh, and, then, and, and then and I was like, foolishly responded to something. Oh uh, yeah. Or, 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 or there was, or there was like uh, some direct message or something. I forget. But then now there's like a, it's in a Facebook forum, like all you know, and it was just like, and I just got so at my wits end. Mm -hmm. I, I finally was just like, you know. I just want, I, I, I posted a, a, a picture, an old picture of me and I'm crammed into a fridge with all these fruits and veggies, all, you know, and I was just like, man, the, my caption was just like, fuck, you know, vegans can be really annoying, man, you know, like really annoying. I just wanted to say, like, like when, when people are, are like on your team, mm -hmm. you know, like let's, let's not alienate people who are really like proactive about like furthering progress mm -hmm. for animal welfare. Yeah. You know, when somebody isn't quite up to your personal standard of veganness, Free of, of, of when they're, when they're, when they're not like, let's not attack the people who are really proactive in, in benefiting. You and know? here's what I'll say. I think in anything extremism is where it shit hits the fan. So I'm sure there are cool Republicans there's cool Democrats. It's just the extreme cool Republicans. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I know some fucking cool Republicans who are like, you know, very liberal in some areas and very, right. and I know some that go back and forth. I, I can't imagine right. being one, you know, but I just think to me, it's always like, and I'm, I sometimes do come to the defense of the non vocal vegans who are just like, yeah, do what you want, man. I'm going to do like Ian Edwards and Neil Brennan, <laughs> right. like, like, you know, Travis Barker. I, yeah, right. I've known them for 10 years. We've had, you know, Right. Neil and I have dinner, used to have dinner once a week, never once does right. he even talk about, you know? Right. So it's like there are some cool ones. We just, of course, hear from the right. didactic sort right, of right, right. nasty ones. You and, know? And, uh, and, 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 and you're absolutely right. There are totally wonderful vegan people. And, and it is just like... They're just like, do the best you can. Do you. Yeah. yeah, do the best right. you can. You know, I just... I had a pig and I stumbled upon getting a pig. I didn't plan on getting a pig. Once you fucking have a pig and you see how smart they are, it's just like, I just couldn't go back. You know what I mean? It was just yeah. like one of those things with just pigs. It was just like, oh yeah, dude. Like, I just, it, I mean, so much smarter than my dogs. <laughs> it was just right. like, you know? You know what it was for me was when I was hearing all the voices on drugs. Yeah. Like I, I was, I was just, I, I needed to know more about what I had this connection with. Like I was like the, the barriers were eroded and now I'm interacting with these spirit entities. And so I was, I was, you know, I took to the internet to research spirituality and like, what's going to learn? What, what's going on? What am I privy to? Like, yeah. let, me, let me learn about what it is. And 
I came upon this video of like a fucking Krishna consciousness guru in India. And he just said one thing that caught me. He said, how can you expect to be saved if you eat meat? Like it just seemed like, you know, and then I think by anybody's standards, whether it's like uh, go to heaven, be saved, nirvana, like whatever it is, like there's some kind of a consensus that the human experience is is essentially we're in a fucking jam and we're trying to get out of it. Yeah, <laughs> you know? uh, yeah. We want we want to ascend as we're in this fucking thing, and it's like we need to be saved, we need to fucking get, yeah. get out of here, we need to go to heaven. But whatever we're in, we're in we're in a fucking jam. Yeah. And like the idea of this is to somehow like no matter what religion or spiritual, like you know, wisdom is like our purpose is to get out of this jam by, yeah. by by finding salvation yeah and this guy who is like this spiritual how can you expect to be saved if you, and then i thought oh no i'm not gonna be saved because i'm fucking eating meat and i, I immediately <laughs> started, i mean i didn't i stopped eating meat except for fish at that time yeah because i was like oh well fucking jesus like was a fisherman man like, like <laughs> eating fish has to be cool <laughs> How long have we been going? So long that I have to let you go. Good. So long that I have to let you go, but I love you, and this is like long overdue, but I'm glad we did it when your podcast was out. Oh, shit, I never... Yeah, we talked about it a little I, bit. We talked about it a little, about bit, yeah. a little bit. Dude, yeah. the Dr. Drew episode I just listened to was fucking great. The Ronda Rousey episode, I watched the entire thing in one sitting. Wow, it was just you. so fun to watch. Like, you get people that are so, like, you have such good chemistry with, but you're in, like, different worlds as, you know. I love having all the our friends on, the comedians. We all get to see, but it's just been really refreshing, like, how you're curating your guests. It's it's just such a... I'm just tormenting myself. But I got to get someone that, like, the never guess I'm going to have. Like, I got... I've, 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 I've had a comedian. Now I got to get a musician. Now I get an athlete. Like, yeah, you're, like, you're being a perfectionist about it. That's good. That's what makes podcasts great. That's something right. I don't think you should maybe fix about yourself okay. wanting, oh, yeah. wanting to be excellent that's fucking awesome I, yeah i i you I, know i want to be fucking i want to be that's excellent. why you're gonna fucking be the king of this dude all right that's it all right well, I, love I, I love you i'd give you a hug but, but don't uh, get don't get the <laughs> fuck away from me all right love you i always end this very awkwardly everyone knows that bye guys um uh love you don't ride elephants thank you See you on the gram and on the Twitch and on the TikTok. Dude, I fell off my bike yesterday.